Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the High Roller Super Millions. Today is the 27th of October in the beautiful year 2020. Even though it's been rough for some of us, but it hasn't been rough for the High Roller Super Millions because today is generally the most excited I've been for any of our final tables. I'm Kevin Mondekoy, also known as Rotterdam, and with me, as always, is Nano Noko. Nano, we could talk about a lot of things, but we can also just talk immediately about the absolutely amazing lineup we have today. Yeah, but I got a haircut today, so should we talk about that now? <laughs> yeah, we should actually. I mean, I already addressed that in the pre-show. Well, the pre-pre-show, the, the show that people can't watch, but beautiful haircut, Nano. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. But yeah, like you said, I am super excited about this final table. Shuffle up and deal. This is going to be one hell of a final table. We are all super excited. A true star-studded lineup. Arthur is opening things up, raising a stand off suit on the gun. And Nicholas just calling with the jacks. Yeah, two jack. You could, um, that's what I was saying. Players like Nicholas Estet, Lena 900, you know, European, these guys are super solid. So mm -hmm. if it's in a spot where they should kind of like kind of stay in the tournament a little bit, but still get involved, they don't like to kind of just get it in recklessly. Uh, 40 big blinds against undergun. You know, maybe you kind of say if you ever get this in pre-flop, you're usually flipping at best. Flop is 997. Nine, Nader even made this a call from the small blind. And then Mark is like, well, at this point, I'm priced in as well. So I'll tag along for the ride. But I don't really see uh, a world where Nicholas doesn't just take this hand down. Like, Nader shouldn't be calling here, right? That's just too much. Yeah. I, in my opinion, I think Nator, yeah, he probably shouldn't be calling. It's It might be tricky, though, because you're thinking, man, I, I flopped a reasonable hand. He does make the call. The uh, thing is, Seven, eight, three opponents betting here. I'm just trying to think, uh, what does he beat? I mean, Jack 10? Because n the truth is, Nicholas Estet wouldn't be calling with hands like eight, six suited uh, pre-flop. He would just be folding no. those. So was he beat like two sixes? Uh, does two sixes bet? I don't, I'm not too sure. So Okay. Nader, this is your moment. We always see crazy hand histories of you. <laughs> Are you journey to the final table? This is where you just ship it in and represent the nine. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god, he does! <laughs> but I don't think Nicholas can fold here, and yeah, well, Nator is just... He just burnt a lot of chips there. He's got, he's got three big blinds. Yeah, no, he burned everything. He may as well just... <laughs> uh, could have just gone all in. Oh, I mean, I like the play. It just didn't work out this time. Let's see if he can hold it against the 6-9 offsuit. What about Romashka? Do you think Romashka might... No? No. <laughs> Ace eight offsuit against six nine offsuit. Lean on the hundred is like, well, we may. Oh my oh. goodness, what a flop! <laughs> Some well, guys just gonna... run so good, man. They just run so good. That's gonna be it for Nader. Unfortunately, his uh, third final table did not last very long. Tried to make a cool move earlier on, but maybe that just wasn't the right time for it. That was the first hand of the tournament as well, right? Uh, it was the first hand, yeah. It was the very first hand. Uh, because Nator has somewhere, somewhere to be. And it's not this tournament. The Romashka, the shortest stack at the table, is opening up Ace-9 suited under the gun. And, well, it's music to the ears of Niklas. Yeah, and Romashka is like, you know what, I'm going to raise it a little bit bigger now. Just uh, I want to make sure you guys fold and make it look as strong as possible. Uh, but it's it sh shouldn't work. Uh, Nicholas is going to three bet the ace queen suited, try to get it in, try to take it down. Pre flop. Don't do anything weird, Arthur. Not yet. They will give it to you eventually. <laughs> wow, the ace nine suited snap calls the three bet with this stack size. I don't know what what to make of that, but uh, I think he just dusted off some chips. We. we what, what is Nator and Romashka doing? Uh, they're just throwing away some <laughs> chips right now. I, I don't know, Nana. Romashka will make the fold after he realized that this was not the flop he was looking for. Michael Ardamo is showing all of us that he had a king. Thank you, Michael. We appreciate it. <laughs> we got a new chip leader, too, actually. Nicholas did slowly uh, outtake Michael Ardamo. But this is pretty much from winning chips from Nator and Romashka. Mm-hmm. Georges this time is the one opening up with ace queen suited. And I actually think that Romashka is going to go all in. If you have got five big blinds, that's a, I guess a decent I've... flop for King 10. I mean, this has got to be it for Romashka, right? you got to go for yeah. it. Yeah. 
I, I would have just open jammed the flop, do a stop and go, mm -hmm. uh, because you can get some like ace three, you know, ace three to fold. So the pocket fives, pocket sixes, pocket sevens, they probably will fold. Um, I think that was, I know his opponent's never going to fold ace queen, but he definitely should have just open jammed his flop. And I don't know, what he's just happening? trying to play some, he's trying to play some multi street poker right now, you know. Uh, <laughs> Now he's got a fold, I guess, is too no! I don't know. Oh, come on. I would have actually just liked to see him call, even if he is behind, but he most likely has outs. There's so much in the middle. Now he's down to three big blinds. I mean, the man has one big blind, and he may just feel like, well, I think I've got two life cards here. And going up against pocket fives is like one of the best things he could have hoped for. But Mark is in the hand as well. And Mark flops top and bottom pair. So now it's going to be rather hard for Romashka to win this one. Unless he spikes a 10 on the turn or river. Well, Archer is going to bleed a little bit of chips there. He is going to put two big blinds in roughly. And Mark's got ace three, top and bottom pair. Um, I, yeah, he looks like he's going to go for a check raise. But I wouldn't mind him just calling there. Maybe he can get Archer to like multi-barrel and he check raise all in on the turn. Yeah, I don't mind the play. I think he's just hoping that like Archer would have had a random ace and then... Make sure that he stays ahead. Well, we need a 10 or an 8. Or our satellite player is bamboozled. And it is not going to be a 10 or an 8. Artie will give another nice play emoji. Romashka will finish in 8th place. And he walks away with $54,000. Not bad, Nanonoko. Turning 100 bucks into 1,000 bucks into a $10,000 tournament ticket into $54,000 on the Tuesday evening. Well done by Romashka. I have the feeling that Mr. Gamble is going to tag along for the ride. He's like, Jack, four suited, baby. 50k extra to play a three-way. I'm, I'm in. And he does flop a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. Giorgio's flops an uh, open-ended straight draw. And Michael Adamo casually flops top pair. What do you make of the flat call pre-flop by Michael Adamo with ace-queen offsuit? Don't mind it. Um, I think the standard probably is the three-bag get it in. Uh, but... Um... You know, I think you can probably go either way. Giorgio does check. At this point, Adamo's got to just bet. Uh, he's going to put a small bet out there. And I think that might get Giorgio to consider a check raise all in. Because a lot of times, you would just check call here. But sometimes you see the small bet and you're just like, ah, oh, man, when they bet so small, they got nothing. But maybe Mr. Gamble is going to go for a check raise. He's going for, I don't know what Mr. Gamble is doing. It's <laughs> I know what Mr. Gamble is doing. He's playing... You know, when I play like that, people are like, oh, you're a bingo player. And I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you may as well just play bingo, man. He's like, he's hoping for the nine of diamonds. Doesn't get the nine of diamonds. We do get a king, though, which means that at this point, Georgios has actually taken the lead with his top pair. What a bizarre hand. Yeah, a bit, a bit weird, um, but uh, I like the way Georgios, uh, you know, he's, he's cruising. He doesn't want to exactly get in, but he obviously doesn't want to fold. Uh, Adamo of Ace Queen, I don't see how he thinks he's got the best hand. Uh, I, I, unless you, you're really stretching, and uh, it looks like Georgios is going to ship this pop. But you know, Mr. Gamble, he he might just throw in like 600k. I don't know. He just feels <laughs> like he, he doesn't have anything, right? And maybe he could represent the 8 9. And yeah, I think he could. He absolutely could. I mean, he's in the big blind. He goes for the massive bet. If Mr. Gambo gets both of them to fold here, he's my new favorite player. And I, I will <laughs> never stop speaking about Mr. Gambo. Giorgio's with his top pair. What will oh, Giorgio's man. do? I think Giorgio's might fold this hand because I'm just trying to think what hand he beats besides the same exact hand, King Jack. Because, like, the truth is Gambo shouldn't have that many blood. He does get King Jack to fold. I don't know if Adamo can call Ace Queen though either. He's just thinking like, what does he beat? I don't know a hand he beats, and that's why this is actually a brilliant bluff here by the Jack Four. Even the oh, it's such a crazy hand. He beats Jack Ten, maybe that would play like that. Nice. Oh my God, Mr. Gamble gets it done. <laughs> he just called with the Jack Four, called on the flop with a couple of backdoors and a gut shot, and then he just fires a massive bet on the river. He's like, hey, you guys see the eight pairing the board? Yeah, that's me. That's my name all over it. I love it. Well done, Mr. Gamble. If you guys missed the broadcast last week, Mr. Gamble actually finished in a second place after a pretty epic battle with Ole Shemion. And there was that one hand with King Seven that if he would have just made the call, he would have most likely ended up winning the tournament. But it's super cool to see him back already the following week. 
and making a couple of great plays against fantastic players. Jao Vieira could be in a little bit of trouble here, Nananoko, as he's opening uh, not up. Not a little for... bit. He's in a lot of bit of trouble. He's going to be out of his tournament pretty soon. Well, that's what you always say, but we still have five <laughs> cards to go, Nananoko. There's no chance. It's, it's literally impossible for a seven to come. Literally. He's going he's gonna to flop quads. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> See, it's literally impossible. Quads, well... queens. That's what I meant, obviously. <laughs> Congrats to Mark Radoya, who picks up a 1.2 million pot. And Jao Vieira is once again out in seventh place this time. So, not the magical run that uh, the Portuguese all time money list leader is hoping for. But uh, it's fun to have him. Played a couple fun hands, but yeah, I wasn't really able to make big waves happen at this final table. Yeah, I haven't seen like a big performance from Zhao yet from our final tables, but uh, did, did, I'm pretty sure Nicholas instead has flopped a straight with 6 9 offsuit to bust out uh, Nator earlier. He's yeah. lost another straight, same flop. I know, but it's perfect as well. It's like <laughs> it's a rainbow board. It's, it's ridiculous. This is the second time 6 9 just flops a perfect straight. I mean, maybe even more perfect if the 10 is a 5, but it, this is good enough at the final table of a 10k high roller. Wow, an overbet. Um, I think I should get Archer out of there and, uh, you know, got a little greedy there, but, you know, some people like to get a little greedy. Ooh, this is a, wow, this is oh my huge God. hands. And they both yeah. got massive amounts of chips. Wow. Is this going to oh, get no. it in? I don't know. This is going to be so bizarre. Okay, basically, Giorgio's is shoving under the gun with Ace-5. At least Arthur gets out of the way with A-6 suited. You know, Nicholas oh. Ostet is perhaps in some trouble here because two of the aces are dead. So he loses Just, quite a few of his outs. Wow. I feel like Gamble sh is okay. He's got six, 70 big blinds almost. But I feel like this is the spot where maybe you just go for it because I don't know if Nicholas Ostet is jamming two queens, two kings, two aces. It does seem like he's got ace, king, or maybe like two tens or two, two tens. Two nines. It's possible. It's yeah. possible. Gamble, I think, should use a lot of time bank here. Really break it down. Look, you, you already got second place before. You're kind of free rolling this tournament today. No! Oh, he... oh, my goodness. I truly wish that he would have called. Uh, let's see if the Jacks would have held or not. Oh, my oh. goodness. Three queens on the flop. And Jack on the turn as well. I mean, that doesn't really change anything. Can we get an ace or a king on that the river? That is isn't it? Oh, no, it's not. Oh, man. If Mr. Gamble went for it, he'd have all of the chips. But if Nicholas, let's just say Nicholas instead actually just re-raised minimum, man, they would have got it in because two jacks might have just jammed it in and this could be crazy. But this has been a fast final table, man. I would love to see the two jacks call, but I don't blame him for folding. But, man, uh, I would love to have seen it. Yeah, so actually, I'm not sure if you're aware, but there was a time when, um, I don't know if you know Patrick Leonard Pads, uh, uh, him, they had like this prop bet. It was uh, Patrick Leonard, the European, and this guy named Elmerix, which is their kind of like their crew. They're obviously mm -hmm. three very strong players. And they had a prop bet against uh, Lena 900 and some other guy, two Swedish guys, uh, C. Darwin or something. And um, I think the, the Nicholas Estet and his team of Swedes did win the, that prop bet. It was just like a, a prop bet of who can get the most caches in some tournament series. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to talk about too much because there's a hand this going hand on right now. This is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my oh, goodness. Dear. Turn card. You're thinking, okay, it's just a one and done type flop, right? But no, when you turn that kind of a draw, I feel like Nicholas Estet's going to put a huge bet in here. I mean, like, well, over 1 million. No, oh, wow. He's going over 650k. I wonder what Arthur does here. This is a pretty sick spot for Arthur because you're like, man, I feel like my hand is good. I get three bad before. Oh makes the call. But Nicholas Ostad spikes the nine on the river, makes the straight. Oh, man. Arthur is running rough tonight. Yeah, uh, but he made the good call on flop. Good call on the turn, of course. Uh, and Nicholas Ostad shoves the 10 8. Now, that nine is so sneaky, too, because, like, yeah. okay. It, it's not a flush getting there where like, okay, you can put him on his control. Now it's just pure trying to bluff, catch, and guess, and Arthur is in a tough spot. Man. 
Well, like you said, Artie make the correct call. Pre-flop, on the flop, on the turn. Let's see if he can make the correct decision on the river as well. This is obviously for Artie's tournament life. A disgusting run out. There's no other way to put it. And Ace-10 is... It's a pure bluff catcher right now. Uh, mm -hmm. He's, you know... He, he, the 10 is, uh, he does block some straight draws that would bluff this way. Maybe like a Jack 10 suited, you know, like a 10 suited. But still, I mean, it's a tough spot because your hand looks like ace 10. It looks like ace jack. And your, your opponent still puts you to the test. Uh, it, it's just, it's a really nasty spot because uh, if Nicholas has had a, a draw, he might still feel obligated to bluff uh, this river card anyways, just because, you know, try to represent that ace king. As you guys can see, Arthur is deep into the tank. If he makes the call, he would be wrong and his tournament run would be over. He would be eliminated in fifth place. We've seen Arthur make a couple of great laydowns in the past. We know he likes to be aggressive. Doesn't love falling too much. I feel like that's a trend with most of these top players that like to be aggro. They don't like folding. Uh, it hurts I'm, I'm Arthur, not... but... I'm not sure how often uh, Nicholas Estet is doing some triple barrel bluff in this spot. I do know that if I was against Michael Adama, I would never be folding. I'd be just like, man, you just got lucky. Good luck for you. But like against Nicholas Estet, maybe that's what Arthur's thinking. Is like, how often has Nicholas been three barrel bluffing? And like, we don't know what happened before this final table occurred. Of course, these guys got a lot of history. There's a lot going on. Oh, it's, it's no. a call, and it's GG for Arthur Martirosian out in fifth your guy is gone uh, this wasn't meant to be for arthur he really couldn't get much going and nicholas Osted is just running hotter than the sun tonight even when he's three bad bluffing pre-flop on the flop on the turn he somehow gets there on the river and he is now our dominant ship leader with 9.5 million nanonoka i'm gonna do some quick math for you he's got more chips than the other three players combined okay <laughs> yeah um like this is all lena lena 900 is crushing like he's gone to our final tables and hasn't been uh doing as well he got like i think like a fourth and a seventh but this is the, yeah. this is his night tonight um i don't know if adam was going to get his fourth uh, title today it doesn't it doesn't really seem that way because he's been losing chips to this chip leader as well but i'll tell you this yes adam was clearly in, in second but you know he's got a, he's way out chipped but he still has 50 big blinds, which is a lot to play with. Um, you know, say the blinds were higher to like, one, you know, 100,000, 80,000, I would be like, okay, this is all like easy pickings for Nicholas. But there's still a lot of play to go. Yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't, and you know, like Nicholas said, he's, he's very, very good. Like just because he's Michael Dom doesn't mean he can just run over these guys. Well, Nicholas is opening up 9-5 suited. Uh, under the gun at this point. Let's see what Mark decides to do with his ace-10 offsuit on the big blind. Will he raise? Oh, he'll go all in even. And he'll I get like the it. immediate fold out of Nicholas. Well done by Mark. He's fighting back. And now Mr. Gamble picks up the aces four-handed. Mark Radoya just won a whole bunch of chips. And we know that he doesn't like to hang on to those for very long. Because he does his <laughs> best work from like the 12 to 15 uh, big blind area. Yeah, it looks like he wants the three better, doesn't he? Yeah, oh, okay. No. You're, it's funny because you're right. Now he's back down to, to two yeah. million in chips. Fuck. Should Mr. Gamble, Gamble should call? ever call? Yeah. Yeah, he should call sometimes. Um, but here's the thing is, I think Mr. Gamble thinks Mark Rodoya has been playing a little bit more snug. So he might just four bet this uh, thinking like he's, his opponent actually has a hand. Oh, nice call, though. Very nice call. Gamble is he's, on point today. Yep. And he's got position, of course, as well, right? Post-flop. So that helps a lot. Mark Radoya will most likely bet probably like 420. <laughs> it's perfect <laughs> 420 amount. Yeah, 329 is going to be. And now I'd like to see Mr. Gamble just either go all in or put in a big race. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Well, I don't mind him just calling with two aces, to be honest. Oh, it's scary. It's scary. <laughs> now now you're going to get in. Yeah, I, I do like the call, actually, because say his opponent had, like, ace-king, ace-queen, or king-queen, you, you don't want to let him uh, off the hook so easily. If his opponent had, like, ace-10 or whatever, they're going to get in anyways. I, I do like the play, but at this point, somehow Mark Rodoya 
is gonna get all oh, the chips no. in. Well, he's got a lot of outs. I mean, any nine, any queen, any spade. So there is a chance. His very big hand can Mr. Gamble's aces hold? Yep. He's I think that that's safe. a hold. That's always a hold. Yep. Three pips can never be a nine there. So that is always a hold. Well done by Mr. Gamble. And that means that we are down to three. Mark Radoya had a, a bit of a roller coaster tonight. He will walk away with $151,000. And then Anoka, we've got the triangle of death over here on the left side of the table. Because I think these, these three are going to give us some fireworks. That's right. And uh, yeah, it's funny because you said that it's hard. Mark Radoya does his best work from 10 to 15 big blinds. He had a little bit too many, so he decided to dust a little bit too many of the chips off. A very smooth play from the two aces from Mr. Gamble. Actually collected all those chips. Uh, really well done, because if he four bet that, Mark Wadoya would still be in. Mm -hmm. No, the, the, the call pre-flop was perfect. And then maybe even the call on the flop was perfect as well. But incredibly well done. And Mr. Gamble, he's on one hell of a heater in the high roller super millions last week. That young man, I think it's a young man, took uh, second place. And now he's down to the final three once again. We've never seen anybody win the High Roller Super Millions two weeks in a row. We've never seen anyone get two second places in a row either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's actually, he's actually quite good. Um, uh, you know, he's a little bit splashy here and there, but I, I like the way he plays. Um, of course, I like the way the other two guys are playing right now. Uh, Nicholas Estet's been a cruiser, but he has been bleeding. He's been losing a little bit of chips here and there, but I wouldn't say he's been giving any of the chips away because he did lose, like, the ace, queen, against the two fours, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Adamo he's actually haven't been having that great of a tournament today, but still in the top three somehow. I mean, I don't even remember much. I know that Nator just kind of lost it all on the 997 <laughs> board for uh, with 7-8 suited against the Jacks. And then Romashka thought it was a great idea to play Post flop poker with three big blinds, and uh, that didn't really work out. And Archer just didn't happened. really have, yeah. yeah Archer, Archer just lost the ace 10 suited, right? And then everyone else just kind of just died off. Oh, I, I guess Mark did three bet the queen nine suited to bust his stack because he had too many chips. Oh, okay, <laughs> nice turn card. Nicholas does that makes two pair. Michael Adama does still have top pair, does have a gut shot as well. Yeah, I think uh, Adamo is going to lose a, a good amount of chips here. Um, once Nicholas Estet checks back this swap, it does look like the Jack-10 is good, but the Ace should save him uh, from losing too much more. Maybe he loses a little bit more, but not too much more. 700k in the middle. I feel like Michael Adamo really has nothing but not uh, nasty spots tonight. He never really has his opponent crushed. He never absolutely has it. He truly has to battle for each and every single chip that goes his way. Well, and that's what you you want to be when you're such a strong player. Uh, you want to be the one that can fight these uh, tough spots. And Nicholas, I think against this bet, can go for a raise. Uh, yeah, I, I like to see him raise it up. It's a million chips and Adamo in a tricky spot um i always think that nicholas instead hasn't been too crazy out of line so maybe he can talk himself into a fold but uh, it's annoying because when you bet so small you do induce some raises right it's from some bluffs yeah. how often is jack 10 good here that's the question that michael demo is asking himself right now and what does he beat but well, the problem with jack 10 is you, you do block a lot of hands you block some straights, you block some flushes, you got a good pair. Um, yeah, it's a, it's annoying. I guess you got to start thinking what hands my opponent would be bluffing in this way. Hmm. And I'm not too sure what that would be. I guess a 9x type hand would make some sense. Well, which kind of 9, though? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. Wow, a re-raise what that is actually one hell of a play i did not really expect it michael adamo pretty much all in at this point i mean it is a scary board there are flushes maybe michael is just like hey, i've got the 10 of clubs i can represent the flush i can represent the straight <laughs> could have yeah. 10 90 you know wow this is insane play well i think nicholas instead has to make the call it's it's 1.4 million more it's 15 big lines you the thing is, when Adamo puts in that small bet, is he really doing that small bet with, like, 
a, a flush? I don't. I'm not. I'm not sure because I don't think Adamo would re-raise this way if he had a two pair. I think he just calls the raise. Yeah. Wow. I think so, Lena might look him up here. I don't. I don't know. This might be the end of Michael Adamo. I don't know what your thoughts are, but this is a tough spot. I think I'm with you, because Michael Adamo normally bets a bit bigger as well if he actually does have it. Like so, if he would have had a very strong hand, why would he bet so small? Yeah, I think if Adamo bet out the river like a third pot, they'd be much more credible. But this is like a, it was like a, it looked like a blocking bet. Uh, just, I mean, Adamo, I, I do like that he's opting to raise his hand rather than call to raise, though, just because maybe he can move like a one pair hand off. Like, oh my yeah, god, that's this is the end of Michael Adamo. Nicholas Ostad does make the correct call with his two pair, and Michael Adamo is left with one big blind. He does get ace 10. Mr. Gamble gave us the oh my god, but that is pretty much it. That play just came out of nowhere now. Now, I really didn't expect. Yeah. I mean, the 10 of clubs is a pretty sick card to bluff with, I guess, but the rest of the hand just didn't really make that much sense, though, right? Yeah. FPS, fancy play syndrome. That was as fancy as it gets for Michael Adamo. Sometimes uh, you just got to let it go. I, I know Adamo was thinking, look, I don't think my hand is good, but maybe I can move my opponent off the best hand. And he's now, is he out of this tournament? Is this a, no, he's out. The eight makes a straight. Yeah. Mr. Gamble's got the best straight possible. So that is it. Michael Adamo is eliminated in third place for the first time in High Roller Super Millions history over at GG Poker. Michael Adamo makes a final table, but does not actually end up winning it. <laughs> that's such a weird statistic for us to uh, have to bring out, right? But that's true. He has a 75% win right now. Uh, things did not go his way, like you like you were saying. Uh, but that play, was, I felt like it was a little bit unnecessary. I felt like he just mm. wanted to go down with one bluff before he leaves. <laughs> Three clubs on the board would be very fun here. Club, 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 <laughs> spade, spade, run out. No fair at board. Mr. Gamble. Oh club, my club, god! Club, club. Well, did you just say club, club, club? Because they both yes. flopped a flush. And I think Mr. Gamble is going to win all of the chips right now and be in a. He's going. He's going. He might ship this tournament today. And love him, said, as long as no more clubs come out. I said club, 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 and then spade, spade, run out, no paired board. Well, the board is not pairing yet. Both players still sitting on a flush. But Mr. Gamble's 10 high flush is better than the 9 high flush of Nicholas. Oh my goodness. Nanonoko, is it happening? If the board doesn't pair, if we get like an ace of spades or a deuce of spades or something, Nicholas is going to lose so much. Oh, that's oh a good run my out. God. This is a perfect round. You know why? Because also Mr. Gamble has like two pairs and stuff. Nicholas is going to think, oh, I can get some sick value. Um, oh, Mr. Gamble obviously is going to go for a big bet. I guess the question is, does Nicholas Estet raise? Depends on what the bet size is. I feel like you would, though, right? Like The board would, didn't personally. pair. There are I not would. four gloves. Yeah. I, I, would, I, would, I would go all it's in an, here. If I, it's oh, an over bet. He yeah, saved himself, but it wasn't an over bet. So maybe that's what uh, got him not to shove. But man, Mr. Gamble, is he's got the 10 million chips. And now we've got a five-minute break. Wow, what a stunner hand right before the break. <laughs> okay, it's a top pair versus a mid pair. This is actually a good spot for a Lena 900 to pick up some chips back. Yep, dropping top pair here is pretty good. Ooh. Oh my goodness, ace on the turn. Mr. Gamble improves the two pair. Tables have turned. Nicholas Estad ran hot for two hours, but he had to close it out then. No, no, you can't run hot forever. <gasps> it's a That's pot so size bet. Wow, the pot size bet makes your hand look like a draw in oh, another call. And the flush gets there check, on the check. front. I think I don't check, think check. Yeah. I think Mr. Gamble's got to bet this hand. It's just too strong and heads up. Uh, okay, I guess. Yeah, yeah. it's heads for up, some reason, man. I we're, not no, for, we're not for laddering. For some reason, no I thought that there were four spades on the board. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I... No worries. Oh, it's an all-in play. Does wow, Nicholas a step put to the test no, on the first no. hand after the uh, second hand after the break? Does he make this call? What do you think? No, I don't think he makes this call. I think it'd be too wild. He don't even have the best possible. Oh my oh, god, he, he makes the call. It's all, it's all over. <laughs> it is all over. Mr. Gamble was the runner-up of the 19th edition of the High Roller Super Millions. And in the second hand after the third break, 
He takes it all down with ace eight offsuit. Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the High Roller Super Millions brought to you by myself, Kevin Van der Koy, also known as Rotterdam in the world of StarCraft and a little bit in the world of poker, I guess, by now. And of course, as always, I am joined by the one and only Nana Noko. How are you doing this week, Nano? I'm doing good. Uh, another cool final table. I'm always looking forward to this week, right? Just always some fighting, uh, exciting, uh, fun final table to watch here. Of course, they're playing for a lot of money. And uh, I think you've been playing a bit of poker, you were saying? <laughs> oh, my goodness. You don't want to know the half of it, mate. The other day, I was up <laughs> till 10 a.m. playing high stakes PLO, at least high stakes for me. And at one point, I was like, the sun is coming up. I hear the birds shipping away. I was like, I should really go to bed. Like, this is getting out of hand. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I played a lot of fun. I had another decent run in the Saturday event, you know, the beat the pros. Uh, unfortunately, not as good as Kevin Martin, who is absolutely smashing it every Saturday. He has like two top 15 finishes in the last three weeks. But I got to the last 70. So that was actually a pretty decent run as well. You know, eventually somebody did beat this donkey, but... You know, no, no, for my stand, that's not too bad. That's cool, man. I mean, how many people play that? I'm not, I'm not too sure. It's getting bigger every week. I believe the last two weeks we had over 1,100 people joining in. So uh, actually a pretty big field, right? $210 bounty event with 1,150 entries, I believe, this week. So that's a really fun event. I look forward to it each and every single Saturday. So I can like open the tables of my friends as well and see how they do. And, you know, we always meet with each other talk about the hands uh, that was actually really cool but yes anyway let's get back to business because of course tuesday evening is all about the high roll is super millions this is a ten thousand three hundred dollar buy-in event that starts on the sunday evening then they play all the way down to the final nine and then on the tuesday evening we bring you guys live coverage of that final table uh, this is the 21st week that we are doing this. We had 153 entries this week, but I am very excited about one man in particular. And no, guys, it's not Mr. Gamble. Unfortunately, he is not with us tonight. The reigning champ couldn't make back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back final tables, but we have one out of a lineup. So, Nano, unless you have something else you want to talk about, maybe the heads-up match that's coming up. Danny on the ground with Dark Pork. It's finally happening. That's true. It's actually happening. I think it's supposed to start tomorrow. I think they're going to do 200 hands of live poker first for some reason, you know, just to get face to face, kind of light the fire a little bit. And uh, it, it's actually happening. Some people were pre at first people were predicting, is this magic finally going to happen? Is it? No, Daniel Grind is going to back out or whatever. But, you know, it's not. He's, he's here to fight. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see that. Of course, Doug Polk is the favorite, but, you know, I like to see Dan Negroni throw some random curveballs in there and uh, really just kind of give give a run for his money. Otherwise, it will be a little bit boring, you know? I think it'll be fun. I mean, uh, I know that you're obviously a betting man yourself. Would you take Daniel at four and a half to one? Oh, uh, man, I tell you, it's really close, man. I, I I don't necessarily like, I don't I don't personally side bet stuff like this, but I wouldn't say it's a bad bet. It just, it's got to be real close. Uh, and the thing is, we don't actually know Daniel's ability. Potentially, if he's actually stronger than a lot of people expect, he could be, 4 to 1 could be a very good price. I don't think mm -hmm. it can get really get worse than that. <laughs> no, I'm really excited as well. A lot of people, even in my Starcraft streams, have been asking like, hey, Roddy, are you going to watch that? It's like, well, yeah, of course. It's like the poker grudge match of the century over here. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I really enjoy watching some of those challenges like, even uh, when, obviously, Vanavidi was playing against Phil Galfond, I watched many hours of that. I thought that was fun, but I think this will be even better. Anyways, let's take a look at the lineup that we have in store for you guys tonight. Nine amazing poker players made it to another final table of the High Roller Super Millions. And let's take a look at the man who comes in as chip leader tonight, the 21st edition. Our first player is going to be... Elio Fox and that is a name that uh, obviously should be somewhat familiar right in the world of poker won the world series of poker main event Europe in 2011 so I'm actually very excited to have him here and I'm curious to see what he's made of production let's take a look at our first player if we can there we go Nananoko a man that needs no introduction Elio Fox uh, man he's a uh... He's one of the originals man like I remember uh, way back when in pocket fives he was like number one 
Uh, so like some of those other guys I mentioned before that made to our uh, final tables, um, you know, I started to hear about him a little bit more recently again. As of the last year, I didn't really hear much about him, but uh, he was like number one player online. Um, he has two bracelets. He's very aggressive. He's very, very good. I've, I I remember playing him with him. I, I think it was the PCA 25K, very, very long time ago. And we were deep in the tournament. And then there was this crazy hand. I, I didn't recall it so correctly where like he bet and it was like he bet some guy's shove and he, he, he re-bluffed with just like a, I don't know, like a gut shot straight draw. Another guy called him with a worse straight draw and the guy hit his straight and he, he's just, stormed out there so fast it was a twenty-five thousand dollar buy-in deep in the tour it was a it was a huge pot it was so crazy <laughs> i remember that so clearly but um you know obviously there's times when he, he has really sick reads very aggressive uh this guy he's he's he might just win it today well he comes in as a chip leader with 51 big blinds so obviously he has plenty of room to make some of those crazy plays and let's take a look at one of the hands that Elio Fox had on his journey to his very first final table. There isn't a whole lot to talk about, but the hand is still pretty bizarre. As Timothy opens from the button and he's like, you know what? Let's put in the three bed with the queen for rough suit. No, 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 no. What are we watching? <laughs> I, I told you this guy's aggressive. Um, as you can see, this table is six handed. So there's either 12 or 13 players remaining in the tournament when he made this three bet. Uh, likely uh, chip leader or very close to chip leader at the time he made this three bet. Look, this is just power poker. He's like, look, you little nits with 20 big blinds. I'm just going to three bet you with any two. I'm playing the players. I'm not playing the cards, you know, and uh, he's just being aggressive, just knowing his opponent really is going to play back at him unless he's got it. And it doesn't matter what he has, to be honest. And th these are the type of players that come into final table as chip leaders. These also the type of players that don't make it to the final table oftentimes, right? Because this is the first time we've seen <laughs> Elio Fox. But I always say, to make money in these tournaments, you got to get top three. This guy yeah. with this deck is easily going to get top three, in my opinion. Well, those are the words I live by, Nananoko. But the amount of eight and nine places I scored at final tables over the last three weeks is getting outrageous. I'm having a little PTSD as soon as my table turns purple at this point at GG Poker because I cannot seem to break into those top threes. But yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to watching Elio Fox play. Obviously, this hand, we can't say much about it, but it is cool to see him make a play that close to the final table. Let's take a look at our second player tonight, uh, who is playing, at least from Ireland, Gravy Boat. Uh, doesn't have as many GG Poker winnings as Elio Fox, as Elio had like 3.2 million. But this man does play a lot of high roller super millions. He has played 18 times. He was in for four bullets to, uh, this time, Nananoko. But perhaps it paid off. I mean, this guy needs to make like top six to even get his money back at this point. Uh, but, I mean, he does come into the final table second in chips, so perhaps it was a good investment. I mean, it's a good investment, of course. Um, you know, I tell you, some of these guys, we don't know their screen names, but they get to the final table have been actually turned out to be some sick crushers. You know, guys, remember, like, Speedy Double was Nicholas Este, who was, like, crushing, crushing, crushing. It wouldn't surprise me. This is some other sick pro out there. Um, you know, he keeps making final tables. We're going to find, find out who this guy is regardless. Uh, he's got a, uh, he plays, you know, all the big events, 5k blades, those are tournaments and, you know, no, no fish is playing those tournaments. These are actually real pros. Uh, maybe, maybe his super million uh, wins isn't too great yet, but, you know, he's made a lot of cash. Seven cashes out of 18 is actually quite a high uh, cash rate. And maybe today's his day because he's coming in second place and, uh, you know, Ireland, they, they got, they, they got some good players. Steve O'Dwyer, I think he always puts himself as Irish, so, you know, we'll see. I mean, 18, uh, seven caches out of 18 tries is not bad, but if in all of them he bought in three or four times, then <laughs> we're, we're, we're kind of break even at this point. Uh, let's take a look at one of the hands that Gravy Boat had on his journey to his very first final table at a high roll of Super Millions. This is quite a fun one as well. I went over it and I'm like, well, if I was Bruno, I'd be pretty tilted about this one. But Nanonoko, what do you make of it? Yeah, exactly what you said. I'll be tilted about this one. Regardless, in this pot, uh, Gravy Boat, continuation pays inside straight draw. Got check raise, and it's, I think, so far, standard got, makes the call. And the turn's probably the interesting part. Uh, the thing is, Bruno got super greedy 
and bet 30,000 into like, uh, I'm pretty sure a pretty huge pot pie, like 150,000 when he bet that one on the turn. Yeah, that, that, that's what, that's, you get punished when you do these little greedy bets because what happened on the river, he, the guy's opponent hit it straight and then now he went for some more value, but uh, he, he got punished very hard there. And, you know, like, yeah, you, you know, you, you want to get called right by ace five, but then it, it, this is, you got to expect this to happen when you make these small bets and gravy boat, you know, he, he got such a good price on a turn. I don't fault him for calling, you know, like, you know, if his opponent had bet like half pot or something, he probably would just, it just gave it away. <laughs> All righty. Let's take a look at our next player that we have at the final table tonight. If you guys are new to the show, this will take 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, the cards will go up to the virtual era and we will bring you guys some live poker, but we always spend 30 minutes going over all the player profiles and some of the hands, and some of the hands we still have to cover are actually really fun, and I can't wait to hear what Nananoka has to say about them. But we'll take a look at this man, the rebuy guy, has already played in 11 high roller super millions, has also cashed four times, uh, has, well, made it to a final table once, apparently on the 6th of September, but back then he went out first in ninth place. So he's obviously hoping to do better then. But that was the big one, though, Nelanoko. I was like, how did he get 110k for a ninth place? But yeah, <laughs> that was the World Series of Poker number 83. So that makes sense. Don't remember much of his play, though. Yeah, he got ninth place. He probably busted in two seconds. Uh, but uh, didn't you say there was a guy also that liked the revive, like third bullet guy or something? Yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> Mr. Third Bullet, he plays a lot in GG, yeah. <laughs> and he always does really well at his third life, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think my favorite uh, stat bio on this guy is he did not rebuy despite being the rebuy guy. Um, so, um, yeah, we don't know much about him, but coming in third is always sweet. And it, we just want to note that it's uh, second largest GG poker win. So I guess the, the one where he got ninth place was his biggest score before. Yeah. I mean, that was a massive event. I believe we had like over a thousand entries back then for 10k. That's uh, or it was like 800 or something, but it was quite sick. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Rebuy Guy had that helped him on his uh, journey to his second final table in the high roller super millions. And this one is wild as well. Never know because sometimes I look at these hand histories and I know these guys are super good, and I'm like, I don't get it. So please tell me, what do I not see? Uh, well. This is probably why this guy rebuys a lot, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's take a look at this hand. So he, he raised pre-flop with king four offsuit, and then, uh, you know, sure, it's a, it's a bit aggressive. And, you know, continuation bet the flop. The turn is where it gets a little bit interesting. Uh, he, he starts betting with just king four high. He doesn't have anything. Just the fact that it's a scare card, he just tried to put some pressure on his opponents, which is a reasonable play. Um, and it's opponent called again. And when his opponent calls again, you're thinking, man, maybe this guy's got a jack. Maybe he's got a queen sometimes, uh, some flush draws. It's, it's a little bit scary. Uh, and the river comes to 10 and he goes for a full pot size bet. Uh, I'll tell you this, a rebuy guy can, he's the only guy that can represent the absolute nuts here, which is ace king because his opponent would definitely re-raise him pre-flop. Uh, but the thing is, even though you can represent the nuts, your opponent still has a lot of hands that that will still call you down despite not being the nuts. Like Jack-10, Queen-Jack, like queen, like this is last year a lot of hands. There's not a lot of hands that will fold though, right? Like the Ace-Jack, King-Jack, uh, Jack-9, all the Jack X's that aren't two pair, uh, some Ace-5, some Ace-4 suited. I mean, there are a lot of hands that you, you beat. There are a decent amount of hands that also still call you, but if you think about it, there's a way more hands that probably will fold to your river bet than call. Uh, regardless, it's a heroic play. Uh, it's really just muscle po power poker. And I guess that's why he's coming in third today. Yeah, I mean, I, I do like the fact you bring up, it's like, well, it could be a king. And I was like, yeah, I guess that's the only thing that does kind of make sense because he does have a king and he's like, well, the four kind of looks like an ace, so I may as well <laughs> just pretend that I actually have it. How would I have played this hand if I did have ace king? He's like exactly like this. So we're going to fully send it and see if I can get it done. Pretty insane hand and I'm looking forward to uh, potentially watching some of these plays tonight at the final table. Which brings us to our fourth player. We have 16 minutes to go. We have to cover five players, so perhaps got to speed it up a little bit. Next up, I believe we have Chris Rudolph our next player 
Um, Chris Rudolph has not made it. Actually, no, he did. He did make it to a final table once, I believe. Uh, no, he didn't. Sorry, I'm confusing my stats at this point. Uh, but he does seem to be incredibly active over at GG Poker with $3.7 million uh, in winnings. Nanoko, what can you tell us about Chris Rudolph? Well, he won the 25K, uh, 1.8 million before, as you can see. Uh, Watton Lowe's, I I've seen this screen name around. Um, I didn't know this Chris Rudolph is that guy. That guy is a very, very, very good internet player. Um, has done well in, in live as well, as you can see. Uh, he's just a sick crusher. Um, I think it's one of those names where maybe you, you don't know him. He's not like those big names like Stevie Chidwick and, you know, Adamo and those guys. But mm -hmm. I tell you, these there's a lot of guys that if you don't know about that are just sick crushers. And I believe Chris Rudolph is one of those guys as well. Doesn't seem to be a very sick crusher in the high roller super million so far. I mean, everything looks good for him other than the fact that he has played in 13 of these and he didn't cash once up to today. So that's quite a bizarre stat for somebody who has done so well in so many other tournaments. But hey, you know, maybe today is the day, Nanonoko. It's better to, I guess, like just win or go final table one time and then win the entire thing than making a whole bunch of uh, min caches, which doesn't really get you anywhere. So maybe today is the day for Chris Rudolph. Let's take a look at one of the hands that he had on his way to this final table. And then Anoka, now I'm thinking of what you mentioned earlier. It's like, well, if I take a look at this hand, is this the reason why Chris Rudolph hasn't made a cash at the Night Roller Super Millions? Or do you actually like this play? I thought this was quite wild as well. Uh, I, it's a bit wild, I'll tell you that. I, I do note that in the last two bluffs, they've been bluffing the same dude, Zufo16. Maybe he just keeps folding every hand and this is the guy they just barrel off with no cards or whatever. Um, the flop check raid's a bit aggressive. Um, you know, it, if people like to check raid these pair boards in a big blind, they, some people just like to give up. But when you get called, I think it is a good bet on the turn with the Jack-10, you gotta open in a straight draw. Uh, if your opponents have a queen, it's really hard for them to continue calling down. Uh, if they have a hand like two fives, two sixes, two sevens, two eights, um, so, you know, some ace jacks or something like that, it's it's pretty also pretty hard to call you again uh, because a lot of guys will check raise a queen on the bluff and they'll play this way. And you know, if you play strong hands one way, you got to throw in some bluffs. And uh, you can see Chris Rudolph is obviously pretty 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 balanced in those spots, I imagine. Hmm. And it does obviously pick up the open and a straight row. So he's like, well, maybe <laughs> if I do get called here, then at least uh, we can see a river card. And if it's an ace or a nine, then we can get somewhere. But I thought this was a pretty adventurous play as well by Chris. But I'm looking forward to it, uh, to watching him play more hands tonight, because this does promise a lot of good. Let's take a look at the man who comes in as a fifth at today's final table. And that is Sebastian. Has played in six high roller super millions so far has also not cashed once yet so that's actually very cool to see two guys that haven't cashed one time now both make it to the final table uh are you familiar with sebastian nano i don't know much about sebastian um looks like he's uh he's born in france uh living in Mon monte monaco monte carlo it seems yeah, monaco. um i guess <laughs> this is the first time i've seen two guys that we report zero on, uh, super millions total winnings. This guy and the last guy. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of new faces today. Uh, and I don't know much about them, but uh, good luck, I guess, right? Uh, so, someone's got to get some winnings today. <laughs> <laughs> well, both of them will get some winnings today. Making final table does get you paid, but obviously they're hoping to make some of those previous buy-ins back. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Sebastian had on his way to the final table. This happened, I would say, relatively early in the tournament, as the stacks are not massive yet. It's a small blind against big blind battle. I couldn't really make much out of this hand other than, I guess, a good call on the river. But yeah, not a very action-packed hand, if you ask me. Yeah, it's a, a lot of checking, but on the river, you know, he does have, what, third pair, no kicker does go for a little min bet on the river and he actually gets looked up by bottom pair bottom kicker of david peters so um i wouldn't say there's too much to learn for besides uh he did get some thin value on the river but uh very small pot <laughs> all right let's take a look at the sixth player coming into the 21st edition of the high roller super millions final table and he's back finally 
We've been memeing about this for weeks. We see his face each and every single week these days at the final tables, but that's because of the emojis, Nano. That's not because he's been here, but I am so happy to see that Elke has made it to his second final table. I mean, do we need to really hype up Elke? Do we need to give him an introduction? Is there someone out there that watches this stream that is not familiar with Elke? Yeah, it's cool to see Elke. But I mean, Elke was waiting to come back to the final table when he finally got his emojis created, right? This is not <laughs> the first time we see Elke with his emojis. I, I hope he's using the Elke emojis today. He better not be using some Daniel Negreanu ones. Uh, I'll just talk about this. Uh, he's, so, he's played the Super Million nine times. Out of four caches, two final tables is actually a very good statistic. Um, you know, so I... I I think uh, he's he's a much better position than he came when he got the eighth place last time. I think when he got eighth, he came in in ninth or eighth place. That is uh, correct. In, yes. So this time he's in sixth place, uh, but he's got twenty big blinds. Uh, he's a regular at the Kings Casino, as you can see in this in this video here, and uh, very cool, very 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 calm guy. I like the guy. I I, I beat him in a bunch of uh, little. We play a lot of prop at Hearthstone matches back there. I won like every single time, and I, we do like a we do like a dinner bet and stuff like. That. I'm up like thousands on this guy and those things. But you know, today is his night. Good luck, Elki. Elki, once upon a time, uh, really had my number in a coin flipping game in a bar in Leipzig. I don't know why, but we just kept flipping coins and. Uh, Alki ran really good that night. It's obviously Alki is a StarCraft legend as well. Was one of the very first non-Korean pro gamers to be successful in Korea. And uh, yeah, a lot of StarCraft people have kind of followed Alki's journey ever since. And I'm just super happy to see him get back. And this time with way more chips than last time. Last time he got a bad beat as well. I think he got it in with Ace King versus Ace Five. And then somebody drilled the five on the turn. I was like, no. But yeah, it's super fun to see him. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Elki had on his journey to his second final table. And I gotta say, no, 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 God, this is not the prettiest one, but hey, we do get an Elki emoji out of him. Look, if this guy is gonna win hands like King Jack offsuit against Pocket King's all-in pre-flop and using running hot Elki emojis against you after, he, he's gonna do well today, man. And uh, look, you don't gotta get it in good. You just gotta get it in and win the hand. And uh, this is this is one of those hands. Yeah, this was obviously uh, very early in the tournament. And I think how many blinds did Elki have at this point? Like 16, 17 ish big blinds. So that's a pretty flop. When you, when you ship it in with King Jack, you get called by King. You're like, oh no, I'm like Queen Nine Ten is like, all right, I've seen worse flops. Well done. Can't wait to see Alki play. I really hope that he has a proper run tonight. And I really think it's going to be a clown fiesta at this final day. But I think everybody will be spamming Alki emotes. So I really think we're in for a treat. This is going to be a lot of fun. We've got three more players to cover. We've got eight minutes. So we've got to speed up a little bit. Next up, this man is just making back to back to back final tables. What it feels like. Or at least three out of the last four weeks. As we can take a look at our next player. But... I'm just going to tell you guys already, Nicholas Alstead, again, Lina 900. I feel like last week we kind of said everything that we could possibly say about him. But Nenonoko, I do think it stings a little bit for him. Because last week should have been his tournament, right? Like he should have ended up winning last week. Nah, it was all Mr. Gamble last week. Nah, <laughs> Nicholas Alstead was, uh, he was set pace to win the tournament. Um, but then, you know, it was just Mr. Gamble who took out Michael O'Donnell. Then he took out Lina 900. And to ship the tournament, but this is very impressive. He's actually improved on his performance uh, from previously. And he's got a lot of cash, it's 580,000. No win yet, but four final tables. This guy is solid as it comes. Uh, he's only got 11 big blinds today, so maybe a bit tough, but uh, he, he loves poker. Yeah, but three final tables within a month is very impressive. October 11th, October 25th. That was obviously last week, and now he's here again on the 3rd of November. Let's take a look at one of the hands that I want to say Nicholas Osset had uh, that helped him get to his final table, but it didn't really help him. And this was the one, Nanonoko, where I looked at it, I'm like, what? Like, why and how? Like, I understand some ace high calls, but this one, I really couldn't figure it out. So I'm very curious to see what you have to say about this hand. Yeah, it looks like uh, it's a it's a hero call. He he called the flop, uh, which is standard with the straight draw. Check check on the turn, and his opponent Nator, who we've seen a lot of final tables with them, who who always comes up with some bluffing hand in series, but usually he just plays a bit more snug at the final tables. Uh, he decided to hero call him. 
I I don't really get the call too much myself. I I'm gonna tell you the reason though. Nicholas is that probably did call was his opponent didn't bet the turn and opted to bet the river. Um, it doesn't really make sense as opponent would have too much value if you think about it because if his opponent had Jack Ten, probably would have bet the turn. So straight, you don't gotta worry about. If opponent had a Queen, they usually they bet the turn. Um, so I guess Nicholas instead was thinking, look, well, I don't know why you're betting this river card unless you have pocket eights or eight, nine. The thing is, Nator actually played his hand tricky and has two kings. So if the fact that he shows up with two kings here means he would show up with like king, queen, and ace, queen, stuff like that. But sometimes, you know, you put reads on your opponent, you do some hand reading, but your opponent plays completely different. And uh, it just, you make a big, you make a big mistake. And that's what I'm hoping Daniel Negreanu does to Doug Polk. You know, it's just kind of a bit of, do some stuff you don't expect and get some sick value, some sick bluffs there. So, so what do you think that Nicholas Ostad uh, thought Nator had, like King Jack, King Ten? Because those are like the only hands he really beats, no? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not too sure. Uh, yeah, it's very thin. Seven five. But the thing is, a lot of these hands okay. would bet the turn. So maybe it was a bit of a, a bit of a brain fart. Uh, just kind of because you, you lose the worst. Other ace highs too, right? Yeah, like that's, ten, that's yeah. why I was surprised as well. Like, if he calls with ace king or ace jack, even, be like, yeah, okay, that could make sense, right? Because you do beat a lot of the random aces, but yeah, ace five, even if your hero call is somewhat spot on, there's a chance you still lose. And that's not a small river bet. That's 90k by Nader. So that was half pot. Uh, pretty bizarre hand, but it didn't stop Nicholas Asad from making it to another final table, the third in one month. So, what the hell do I really know? And I hope for Nicholas that he has another good run. Last week he was running hot. Let's see if he can duplicate that. We've got two more players to cover. We've got four minutes until the final table starts. So let's get it on. Uh, we already saw a little bit of our next player in one of the earlier hands. As it is uh, Timothy, who did make it to a final table. He has played in 20 high roller super millions so far. Has only cashed twice. He was in for two bullets today as well. Uh, I hope for Timothy that he has a proper score in Ananoko because he seems to be loving this event. But just like I have, some of these events, I love them and it just doesn't really work out. It feels that the High Roller Super Millions didn't really work out for Timothy yet. Yeah, um, I mean, if he's in, he's played 20 times, he's got at least 200k in buy-ins minimum into this tournament. So he's not up money in this tournament series yet. If he can spin up these 10 big blinds, he can definitely be up bunny and ship this one, uh, but he's coming in, in low, but he plays a lot of the high stakes tournaments. So, um, you know, you can see he's a, he's an American reg uh, from Chicago playing from Mexico. You know, you got to just keep trying. Maybe you're not winning the tournament yet, but as long as you know you're a winning player, you'll get it done. It's just a matter of uh, variance. All right, let's take a look at one of the hands that Timothy had, and this is actually a sick one as well. I went over this hand, I was like, oh my god, poor Alex Foxen. No, 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 go. talk us through. You want to see it when the guy puts you all in and you're holding the straight flush. A lot of times you're thinking, I got a straight flush, I got a royal flush. How do I get paid off? Because like, I'm holding all of the cards, right? But uh, your opponent shoves into you. You got the straight flush on him. I mean, he barely got that. I mean, he had one out going in one on out. turn. Yep. Uh, just beautiful. And it's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just a sick, sick hand, honestly. And then, like, uh, maybe this is finally Timothy Neuter's day. <laughs> well, this hand was uh, sick, but obviously disgusting for Alex Foxen. You feel that turn, you're like, oh, yes, baby. You know, I've got the nuts. Let's see how much I can get paid off. And then you blink twice and you bust it. And you're like, what? I gotta, put, I gotta start putting people on straight flushes now. Now, obviously there were four to a straight flush there. Like the three, four, five, six is a bit scary. Cause even the deuce of clubs would have made a straight flush as well. Obviously very powerful too, but pretty insane hand. Let's take a look at our last player. The man who comes in with the short stack tonight. This is not his first final table. He's done it before on the 9th of August. Amy Bauer, absolute crusher. He's back. Uh, hasn't done super well yet in the high roller super millions, but he could absolutely run up a proper stack tonight. Yeah, he plays every single super millions. Uh, very cool, very chill guy. Um, he did win the Aussie Millions one event. Uh, you know, he. I think uh, when he came out to our final table last time, he also came in in ninth or eighth place. So he's looking to to perform like that again today. But uh, if he can run up a stack, we know this guy can do very well. 
Let's take a look at one of the hands that Amy had. I want to say that helped him uh, get to his final table, but that is also not the case because every now and then our editing crew is truly evil. And we're like, let, let, let's take a look at that one hand when you had trip kings, but you still ended up losing to the guy with the uh, 10 8. No, 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 go. Pretty, pretty rough hand for Amy. Pretty unfortunate. Um, Jalvera, uh, who we know is a very good player who's made our final tails before, he got lucky on that turn card and got got some nice value out of Ami Bear. Um, yeah, this is why he's coming in the short stack. Can win these hands. Mm -hmm. Well, that is going to do it for our pre show tonight. As you guys can see, oh, the Oki emotes are already in full swing. It seems that the seat selection uh, process is currently going on. Obviously, whenever you make a final table over at GG Poker, uh, it starts off with the seat selection process. Nanonoko says that this is the most important part of the final table. You still feel like that, Nano? When you time expire like that guy just now, the, you lose the tournament. You ain't shipping the tournament. Like, it, it's always happened. You got to change the seats. Um, but what's important during the seat selection phase is taking position. Okay, Nicholas is definitely not winning this tournament. He, he timed <laughs> out as well. Elki, if you don't change your seat today, he will. You're, you are doomed. You got five seconds. You better click. There you go. Elki has a chance of winning this tournament today. <laughs> I do think it's kind of funny whenever I like make a final table of one of these like little turbos or something. It's like, well, I come in at seventh place and then I can swap seats. So it's like, it doesn't matter. You know, there is like six people behind me who have a much bigger impact on how this table is going to look than me. But I do always swap for fun. Sometimes I just swap with my neighbor, you know, <laughs> like just clicking buttons. But I feel like unless you have like a top three, top four stack, you know, your, your fate is not in your own hands anyway. Well, regardless, we got to do our picking. Who's your pick today, Rotterdam? Oh, come on, are you even asking me? Of course I'm going to pick <laughs> Elki. I know that he doesn't have the biggest stack, but he said he's been running good. And hey, if you can win King Jack off sit against Pocket Kings preflop, then this is destiny. Elki's going to ship it tonight. All right, well, today my pick is going to be the chip leader, Elio Fox. I, he's such a good player. He's got all of the chips. There's really no reason for him not to ship this tournament today. Uh, you saw him three bet the queen four offsuit. I, I would love to see Elki do good, but I'm pretty sure Elio Fox is going to take it down tonight. Well, unfortunately, your guy took position on my guy, and I don't really like to see that. I would like to see Elio Fox just get literally uh, any other seat at the table. Anyway, guys, let's get it on. This is, of course, what all of you guys are here for, and this is what Nananoko and me are most uh, excited for as well. Shuffle up and deal. The 21st edition of the High Roller Super Millions final table starts now. And we've got Gravy Boat opening up. Ace 10 offsuit under the gun. I actually kind of like that. You know, when you start a final table, these are the kinds of hands where sometimes, hey, somebody is sitting out. I hope that Emmy Barrow shows up. That'd be oh, unfortunate. I mean, I mean, yeah, he, he has no chips. Uh, so he's maybe. Maybe he took that strategy where if he just sit out, you might actually get a pay jump. You know, someone else will bust before you. You can't make uh, a bad play. Oh, I mean, you could make a bad play for a good hand, but you can't accidentally lose. <laughs> but who knows? Um, we are going to see our first flop here. Gravy Boat defending the 7-5. I do want to say what you said about the ace-10 is smart. In the beginning, the first 30 minutes, no one knows how you play, right? We're on a 30-minute delay. So you can get away with some loose opens here and there. If you got the chip stack, you might as well try and do that. Um, I do want to say I really like Elkies. They've done a really good job with his uh, avatar. It looks really good. Yep. Yeah, his avatar is awesome. The emotes are awesome as well. Uh, I really see them so often. Like, obviously, the standard emojis is still pretty popular too because a lot of people, they don't click through the bottom, so they just spam the first three suggested emojis. But every day that I play, I, I get nothing but elk emojis thrown at my face. And they're good, man. Cool. The running hot elk is, <laughs> is one of my favorites. Let's see. Amy I mean, seems like he's here. He wakes up. He, he's like, I've got pocket sixes. Let's go. He, Ship it in. <laughs> he's so lucky because uh, he just sat in like maybe like five seconds ago. He would have folded those two sixes and then he would have, that would have been a disaster to have folded those two sixes just now. It was very, very close. He came back just in time. Still obviously the short stack at this table with 10 big blinds, but now in a way uh, it's a little bit better. Those 1.5 big blinds mean a lot, right? When you're playing 4-5, it's like, ah. But if you can just get to like 6-plus big blinds, if you then get a double, maybe against somebody that isn't paying the blinds, 
then all of a sudden you're at 14 big blinds and you're like hey i've got a stack again i can actually kind of play and my dreams are still alive you think he's gonna ship it with king 10 also and be adventurous but no he doesn't do it okay It'd be a little bit adventurous, uh, just given the fact that I had a final table, but I think the fold definitely is the right play. And we know Rebuy guy is going to shove the queen eight suit because all these guys like to put pressure on these 10 big blinds and lower, and you could just jam so uh, vigorously against them. Yeah. And queen eight suit is obviously uh, quite pretty, right? Like small blind against big blind against two random cards. I mean, sure, once in a blue moon, the short stack is going to have a hand that he's going to call you with, but you know, as long as you're alive, it's not even that bad. So. Love the play as well. Okay, not really getting anything yet. Nine deals off suit. Let's see what a chip leader does with the pocket fives. Yeah, well, he should be opening this one. I mean, he's got all the chips to do so. No one should play back. Maybe Chris Rudolph defends the seven five offsuit. I'm not sure how uh, he plays his big blind. Um, but right now, Elkie's position in the middle of the pack. I don't expect him to get out of line. Uh, he really shouldn't get out of line. Um, there's three guys with 10 big blinds. He should just be pretty calm, uh, chill out. He's also got the chip leader behind him who three bets people, queen four offsuit, you know? So, like, uh, he really should be uh, chilling right now. What is worth mentioning, though, is that our chip leader this week is not as dominant as it has been in some of our previous weeks, right? Like, 3.2 million is obviously a fair amount of chips, but we've seen people come into these final tables with 5 million chips, 5.2, 5.5, and then you can really start opening everything. Like, Ilio Fox still needs to be a bit careful, because even if he doubles up one of the short stacks, that's going to hurt him quite a bit, and he drops down to 2.5 million, and all of a sudden he's uh, third in chips already, so... Yes, he's the chip leader, but he doesn't have that big of a lead. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's an interesting spot here. Chris Rudolph jams into Timothy. Timothy knew there. Is that King A suited? It was. It's definitely call. a plus EV call from chip point of view, a hundred percent. What Timothy Nuder is thinking is, should I make the call when there's two other guys out there short? And he makes a correct call. Very nice here. And yep, he's got a very, very good flop. Yep, needs to avoid a king or a ten. That is. Not a heart, but the king of hearts is the one that he's holding. And, well, that's not a queen or a ten, so or a king or a ten. So he's going to be good. Well done. Great call. But I think it makes sense, right? King eight suited against two random cards. Yeah, as the short stack, you just have to call. I think if he had, like, 1.2, 1.3 million, then I'd be okay with the fold, of course, because then it's just a bit too much. But he was pretty much the shorter stack. I really like the call. I think it makes sense. Yeah, with ten big blinds, I mean, like, look, you're not... You know you got the best hand. You're not excited about it, but because you're like, well, you know, I know I'm not like crushing. Uh, because mm -hmm. the opponent could have the best hand, but even if the opponent has a hand like ace five, which would shove there, you're not that far behind. Of course, you beat all the queen, you know, the queen jacks, the queen tens, even the ten mm -hmm. nines, the eight nines suited. So you just gotta go for it for ten big blinds, and no one likes to call it off with king eight suited, uh -oh. but sometimes you just got to. And this is bad news for Ami Bear. I mean. He should have just sat out. He really should have. <laughs> yeah, Emmy Barrow already finished in ninth place once at these final tables. He's going to get it in and under the gun plus one with Ace Jack suited. It makes sense with less than 10 big blinds, but Chris Rudolph has a real hand. And the rest of the table is obviously going to get out of the way. Are we going to get some hearts? We saw hearts in the previous flop. <laughs> Look at how he's stabbing his own face. <laughs> oh, oh but he, he spikes jacked. the Jack. Wow. Chris Rudolph needs a queen on the river. And he does oh, get the no. queen. That is in... Oh, that just hurts extra much, right? You get it in bad. You're already upset. Then you had the jack. You're like, oh, that's not bad. And then on the river, you still get that dagger in your heart. Oh, that's unfortunate for Ami, but I think nothing he could have really done different there. That was brutal. Man, he really... Yeah, he could have done something different. He could have just continued <laughs> to miss some of the tournament. He might have get a page on because you saw... Timothy Neuter almost busted before him with the king eight suited. Um, but Ami Bear, again, another ninth place finish. But Elkie's on the button. He's limping the 7-8 suited on the button. I like to play a 7-8 suited. Um, normally, you would be one to be raising. But with this stack size, there is a short stack out there. You kind of want to keep the pot smaller. Um, people can just 3-bet you and just make you fold with such a pretty hand. I like, uh, I like to limp with the 7-8 suited on the button with this stack size, given everyone's stack size. Sebastian, I feel like he was thinking of making a play, perhaps feeling that Elki isn't that strong, but he decided to just check on the big blind. Elki does flop best, makes a pair of sevens, but 
I don't think Sebastian is necessarily getting out of the way here, right? With the gut shot, might just be calling off one street because if he does make a pair, he gets second pair. And if he hits an eight, that's not a club. He has the nuts. So I'd be surprised to see Sebastian fold here. I'd like to see him call to inside straight draw. Um, the 10 and 9 is often probably pretty good too. Obviously, he does make the call. And that's a bad card for uh, for Elki, in my opinion. Um, usually, you want to barrel to ace, but you got some showdown value here. The thing is, I think Sebastian's going to win this pot. Uh, because he's got to think that he's got a bluff with the 10 9, unless. He just thinks his opponent always has a piece. I would love to see Sebastian bet here. And I don't know if Elki can make the call because he really only beats the the straight draws, the 8-9s, the 10-8s, the 10-9s. But the thing is, with an 8, you also block some of those straight draws. So it starts to make it look like your opponent has a bit more value. Oh. But actually, his opponent checks. And I don't know about that play from Sebastian. I would love to uh, see him bet that hand. <laughs> that I think he was afraid that... I think he was afraid Elki was setting him up, right? That Elki was slow playing a monster or that maybe Elki had the clubs and maybe Sebastian is like, is this really the moment to get out of line when Nicholas Ostad has 500k chips? And uh, yeah, you know, if you check, you're never going to win the hand, but I can get it. It's a bit scared poker, but I, it still makes oh. sense to me. That, you know, we just started our final table. Do you really want to start bluffing with 10 high in like the third hand? You know, <laughs> maybe, I, I, I've... But... I definitely would have. It just seems like you, then you're just trying to hit your hand, and I don't. Then I don't like the flop call as much, you know. It's just because if you're not turning your hand into the bluff, like you're, you're missing some opportunity. I don't know because here's the thing: Oki didn't raise the button, so I actually don't think he's got like the ace, the big aces that often. Maybe he's trapping ace, king, ace, queen there sometimes, but the thing is, mm -hmm. he's probably raising it pre-flop a lot. Uh, so sure, you, you the main thing Sebastian was worried about was the ace course and i just think there's a little bit less aces than normal in elki's range that you shouldn't make that stat but uh you know it's okay it it is was this very small pot but it was a uh, could be important you know these chips do add up they do add up but what also could have been the case is that sebastian maybe thought that elki did have a big ace but that elki just limped thinking that elio is gonna three bet a lot of his hands right so elki limps elio three bets and elki ships it in and then elio would be forced to fold so you don't really know, I guess, what's going through the mind of Sebastian. In the end, he only put in 84,000 chips that he didn't have to put in because pre-flop, it was just his big blind. So I think we can forgive him for this one, Nanonoko. Let's not roast him too hard. Well, Nicholas Estet defends the ace-4 offsuit. It's going to probably get put all in by Gravy Boat. Um, okay, it's a check. Um, a little bit surprising, but Nicholas really doesn't have anything. He's got five and a half big blinds, which uh, he's got. He gets to live another day because a lot of guys would probably just ship their river card. Wow, are they going to chop this one up? They are. Yep, they will actually chop it up unless Gravy Boat decides to bet, but Gravy Boat does not bet. So Nicholas Ostad actually dodging a bullet there with the eight sparing. That could have gone a lot worse. Kind of surprising to see Gravy Boat not put in another bet, but. Maybe he just felt that if Nicholas Ostad does make the call with such a short stack, it's just incredibly likely that he has a king or a queen. Um, yeah, I guess so. Um, well, you know what? Nicholas Ostad won some chips that uh, probably shouldn't have won some chips, uh, but it's, it's a nice spot for him. Ace Deuce, think about making a play, jamming all in. And I wouldn't fault him because he's the clear shortest stack. No one else has got a stack like him. Uh, he does let it go, and uh, we're going to see a flop from these other two guys. And wow. Yeah, they, but they both want a nine, right? But uh, Chris Rudolph really does not want the nine. <laughs> I think he'll be okay with a, a six of clubs or a ten of clubs as well. You know, that'd be a reasonable turn card. Yeah, I feel like Chris Rudolph, so he's got a bit of roller. <laughs> the queen of clubs, it's a good card for him. Uh, you know, he's, he almost had like one point something million chips if he didn't, uh, if he lost that hand to Ami Bear as well. Well, the ace of Rebuy guy is still good here. Uh, he's probably wondering on whether or not he should bet his ace. He is going to go for a little bit of value. Now, Chris, Ru Chris Rudolph is now wondering, is my eight ever good here? I don't think he's going to call, though. I think there's just there's no real value in calling with his 9-8, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, if you think about your ranges, you're going to have an eight, a seven, and an ace a lot here. Um, if you're going to show up with an ace here a lot, 
then you don't really need to call with the the worst hands like an eight here. Um, I would like to see him fold because he, Chris Rudolph's going to have the you know the ace nines himself, ace fives, ace like he's got a lot much better hands he can make a call with than, than the eight nine in my opinion. Yep. Not too many hands that uh, you would beat other than maybe the king jacks and the king tens that would have obviously opened from the bottom as well. But good play there by Chris Rudolph. Doesn't lose any more chips than he had to lose. A chip leader getting the seven deuce under the gun plus one. Gravy belt with another proper hand. This time it's ace king. And this can actually spell some trouble, I think, for Timothy, who will probably come along with the king queen. And if there is a queen on the, or a king on this board, Nananoko, this could get ugly. Yeah, uh, I would like to see Timothy Neuter just call here. Um, I think it's a bit, it's a good reshoving hand, but I think it's a little bit risky right now because Nicholas Estet has, you know, eight big blinds. And plus, Timothy mm -hmm. Neuter is closing the action from the big blind. I, I like the call. And he flops, uh, he flops okay. He's got two overs, he's got inside straight draw. And uh, it's a board where, you know, people don't really like to call you down with ace king high. Um, so. Yeah, I think uh, it's a it's a fair fight right now with these two hands. We saw Gravy both play the ace jack rather passive on the king queen whatever board it was. This time he is going to see bet with the ace king though. And this is where it gets a bit tricky for Timothy. Should probably make the call. But what do you do if it's a deuce three four five six seven on the turn? Uh, it's not. It's an ace, but that's also not really the card of Timothy's dreams. Gravy boat on the other end is going to be more than happy to see that turn. Yep. Um, you know, when you get called with Ace King on this flop, you're just thinking, oh, God, they definitely have a pair. But then you get saved with the Ace. And uh, here, you just keep betting. Just now you got to charge those straight draws, those 10 jacks. Just You just got definitely have the best hand. I like the bet sizing here. He goes for a smaller bet, uh, knowing that his opponent probably is going to hero call him down too light. So you, you did a little small bet to try to entice him, but still doesn't get uh, get it done. Of course, just like every week, there is always a jackpot as well to be won over at GG Poker Official on Twitter. All you guys have to do is submit the winning hand. If you predict the winning hand correctly, you can win a jackpot up to $600, I believe it is. Nicholas Ostad is going to get it in with his pocket sevens, and he will get it through. So that's great news. He's staying alive, Nanonoko. He's like, you know what? Last week should have been mine. This time, I'll make another magical run and a comeback story. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, the jackpot. So last, the the last week, the winning hand was ace eight offsuit. Don't remember yep. which suits, but it was ace, ace eight of offsuit. Ace of clubs, ace of clubs, eight of diamonds. Yeah, there you go. Okay, interesting. What do you think is going to be the winning hand today? And um, it's going to be. We got it's always an ace x right but let's mix it up well, how about a 10 9 of diamonds i think that'll be a nice hand to win it let me guess jack 10 suited for you no i think elke is gonna win the tournament with pocket queens pocket queens should have said pocket fours that's definitely more <laughs> oh, uh -oh. timothy neuter oh. is out what kind of yep. what kind of is this he didn't believe Chris Rudolph was over. Uh, he, he thought he was opening a little too wide, but he wasn't. The Queen 10 doesn't really flop a whole lot. Can we get a oh. spade? Yes, we can. One more spade. Problem is, the King of Spades is already out. That is not a spade. And that is going to do it. Nicholas Osted will ladder up. And this is the end for Timothy. Yeah, that was a bit unnecessary, right? I, I, I mean, I like the hand as well, Queen 10. And sure, sometimes you're going to get some faults, but. With Nicholas Osset being that short, I feel like there were better spots to go for it. I think it's a it's a bit reckless. Uh, wow, three three pretty nice hands from three big stacks. I think it was reckless though. Uh, I don't know. It it just seems like you said there are better spots out there. You still got thirteen big blinds. Um, Timothy Nuller was probably thinking, look, I've don't have any super millions caches or I had very little. <laughs> I played all of them. I need to win this tournament in order to get my money back and break even. He's just like, I'm just going to go for it. And wow. he got punished. And a lot of calls right here. And I like the way the hand's playing out right now. Actually, the big stacks should not be three betting. Uh, they should just be keeping the pots a little bit smaller. Because like you said, if one of these three million stacks loses like a million chips or two million chips here, uh, they turn into a short stack, put himself in a very bad position. We actually have four guys with three million chips. So it's actually a very, very close race. And then you all look at Nicholas Estet, it's like he's got 10 big blinds. So that's why you need to be cautious. 
The 10 on the turn doesn't really change anything here, so I bet that Elio Fox feels that he's good. Gravy Boat probably knows that he's good, but he might be a tiny bit worried, even though most tens would bet here, right? Like three-way pot, 400k in the middle. If you have a 10, you'd bet. You definitely would bet now. Um, you can see Gravy Boat being cautious with the two kings, uh, mm -hmm. because like I told you, you don't want to play a big pot. You, you don't. You don't even want to get two kings in on this flop with these stack sizes. So that's why he did check the flop in. Elio Fox trying to feel things out. He knows Elio Fox probably knows he usually has the best hand, but he also knows his opponents will play their hands cautiously, and he oh hits the nine. Wow! 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 That wow. is absolutely brutal and i really wonder how he's going to play this one i think he goes big value i think he just hopes his opponent has 10 and just like tries to get like a little one million up. over bet are we over betting if we're over betting i think a million is a good bet 900k something like this um i don't think he thinks he's going to get licked up licked up too lightly by like two sevens or like you know probably doesn't put his opponent on an over pair too much too because he does expect them to bet the flop a lot so i think he should be targeting the 10 uh most often um, i think but... at this point he's like please have queen jack suited please have queen jack suited <laughs> of course <laughs> of course he's hoping for queen jack suited yeah, yeah. um it's, it's a very tricky hand because you you kind of feel like your opponent's a little bit weak too with the, the, the bow here you're just trying to figure out okay what hands to, what to bet and Wow. Man, my chip leader, he got a little lucky here, but you know what? It's a pot size bet. Oh, man, this is, this is a you tough to spot call. for two kings. I, I think you have to call. The funny thing is he's going to be very worried about his opponent having a 10, right? But it's not the 10 that he has to worry about. Can you fold kings here? I don't know if I would. I definitely think it's possible against Elio Fox. I'm not 100% sure it's possible because I know my opponent, my, the guy I pick is very, very aggressive. Uh, Gravy Boat's thinking about things. And we think about, let's look, take a look from Gravy point, Boat's point of view. He's thinking, what do I beat? Well, there's no obvious hands besides two diamonds. Uh, he's holding king of diamonds. So he does block some of those flush draws, which is, you know, if you're trying to pick off bluffs, you don't want to be blocking those bluffs. You know what I mean? Uh He's probably wondering, okay, why did my opponent bet so small in the turn, though? And, oh. and it's a very impressive fold, and uh, I, I like it because there's no... I think if that river card was not a 9, it's like a card that didn't hit some straights, maybe he yeah. maybe he probably looks them up. Well done. Very, very well done by Gravy Boat. Actually saves himself a lot of chips there, and that's not an easy one. It always hurts a little bit to fold your kings. Maybe if you would have just bet on the flop, that doesn't happen. Do you think the mid, like if you bet flop and bet turn, I don't think nine stick around. Oh, definitely. I think the gravy boat would win the hand if you bet the flop or turn. There's a chance he wins the pot straight on the flop. He bets the flop. It just depends on what sizing he opted for. If he opted for a bigger sizing, he actually probably wouldn't took it down. But hey, it's okay. You know, that's the thing. He actually lost very, very little chips, uh, despite how strong his hand. He actually only lost four big blinds, right? Like two pre-flop, two, two on a turn and that, that's okay, you know what I mean? And Elio Fox probably wondering, how did it not end up winning more in that hand? And the rebuy guy <laughs> takes down the next one with his ace-jack. Gravy Boat has been getting a couple of pretty sick hands so far, no? Like ace-jack in a late position, ace-king, kings. I feel like Gravy Boat is this week's uh, Nicholas Osset. This is not flopping <laughs> that well yet, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can get all the hands you want, but you need to win the hands, you know? Yeah. Um, Rudolph. I think Rudolph's been the one that seems to be uh, been the most uh, swingy. You know, he's had a little bit of roller coasters here and there. He's the one getting all in against people, and he's flopped very, very nice here. But Rebuy guy, he's got a hand that can continue a little bit. Yeah, Chris flopping the gut shot, and of course has the flush draw as well. The Ace of Hearts is of no help to Chris. So let's see if he continues. I don't think it's okay to keep betting on a board like this where. There are a lot of river cards that are going to be good for you. And even if you miss, if you bet flop, bet turn, why won't you just fire again on the river and then knock up? <laughs> yeah, he actually went a little tricky by checking the flop. But uh, yeah, you got to bet that ace, man. That big blind's going to come along with too many weak, weak holdings. And uh, yeah, right now, actually, things have been a little bit calm, I feel like. Uh, mm -hmm. Not too crazy, just busting out some short stacks here and there. But uh I would love to see uh, someone step it up and just really take control and just start opening some garbage hands. You know, I miss those garbage hand players, you know, like the, the Bruno Volkman. Yeah, I, just, I knew you I'm were going to say Bruno. <laughs> I knew you were going to say Bruno Volkman. 
Yeah, but I think it's because Nicholas Ostet is so short, right? Like this is just not the moment to be getting two out of line because if there's somebody sitting there with less than 10 big blinds, why would you ever want to bust before him? Yeah, that's true. And that's the thing. You were saying how everyone's got like kind of like a good stack, but they lose a pot there in really bad uh, a spot here. And uh, uh, this is a bad spot. Think it's, it's for Nicholas. Like, the thing is, mid pair jacks, you're always thinking like, oh, it's not. I'm not going to lose too much. But the thing is, you're only sitting on eight big blinds. You defended the big blind. You're going to feel like you got to call this flop. Yeah. At least uh, because you, you're running out of time. And he does make the call, and that makes obviously matters even worse. At this point, there is way more in the middle than Nicholas Astet has behind. Sebastian makes two pair, which he didn't really need, but it's obviously very nice. Means that Nicholas is drawing uh, that to uh, one of the last two jacks at this point. And seven is to no help to him anymore. Sebastian is just going to put him all in. Yeah. Maybe you can fold, but it does suck to fold. And he does fold, but. At this point, you're down to six big lines, even less than that. And that's got to sing a little bit. Yeah, but maybe, I was going to say, maybe uh, you get a chance again. But uh, rebuy guy, two queens. Okay, that's a nice hand. Sebastian, A7 suited. Sometimes people like to make a little play with A7 suited, 30 big lines. He, he looks like he doesn't want to. Uh, Riva guy will absolutely bump this one up, even though Elio Fox is one of the big stacks. And maybe Riva guy is a tiny bit paranoid about playing a monster pot here, but with queens, you just gotta go for it. You gotta make it big. And, uh, yep. Or would I'm you say that there like... is a argument for calling here? No, right? We've There's seen no people make. I remember there was a guy. I forget who was the guy who eventually shipped it another day. What was his name again? Ah, uh, against Nator, he lost it. You remember he he had was two queens and he. No, it wasn't blackjack. It was it was someone else. But he called with the queen jack suited. Uh, he called with two queens and the and the Nador flopped straight. You remember that? I know you remember oh, the was, hand. Was it a giraffe ganger? No. It wasn't giraffe ganger. It was someone else. Oh man, I gotta find out. But man, he got boozled. punished super hard. <laughs> no, it wasn't being boozled. It was a name. Oh, that was in the early position. You mean in uh, yeah, relatively early in the tournament, right? On the right yeah, side. Yeah. Yeah, would, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Eight nine. Yeah, I remember the eight nine. And he, <laughs> I think he he came back to the next final table. I think he might have shipped the tournament. I can't recall correctly. Um, but uh, as you try to figure it out, it's Elio Fox four betting Ace three suited here. This is actually a good hand to four bet with. Um, and he's trying to put the pressure on his opponent to think because you know rebuy guy can't really go too crazy but at this point rebuy guy needs to just ship this in you know if you got me you got me but what else are you going to do with two queens against such an aggressive player i'm pretty sure the guy was guillaume nolet i haven't looked that's it up, right but that is exactly, yeah but that is the guy. all of a sudden all of a sudden it's like yeah it was guillaume well rebuy guy is gonna get it all in with the queens and Elio Fox is going to make the quick fold with the ace three. I was going to look. We have like a massive spreadsheet with all the results. And I'm like looking for Nader. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I think it was Guillaume. I'm like, yeah, September 29th. I've got it actually on the right right now. So it was the table with Giraffe Ganger. It's just obviously Giraffe Ganger wasn't involved in the hand. It was Guillaume Nola who busted mm. first with the queens. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh... So you see how Rebuy guy played the two queens, and he increased his chip stack a lot, right? Like, sure, yeah. he could have busted just there, but you know, you gotta play to play your cards uh, aggressively, and uh, you know, he went up, and you know, what happened to Guillaume? He he didn't three bet it, and he went out first. Uh, regardless, okay. look at this. Elio Fox had two. Oh he had ace three suited, lost a lot of his stack, and he's got ace king. He's gonna get it all in, and he might bust before all these guys. <laughs> Yep, and I believe did Rebuy guy have an ace? I believe I saw somebody fold an ace already, right? So I guess one of the aces is that. Yeah, I don't, oh. I don't recall, but I just, I'm very worried because I think I just cursed my guy. Is Elio? Wow, Elio Fox just called. Wow, did, he could have got a full double up, but uh, you know, he was against two queens, so you know, he wasn't exactly ahead pre flop in. That, that's crazy, man. He just swoop called the ace king there. Well, we saw Gravy Boat have a very passive approach to his kings. Uh, he is going to bet his queens, but he's going to bet very small, where it's kind of like, I don't see how my opponent can call unless they have an ace, right? That's kind of what this bet is meant to figure out. Yeah, I mean, you just got to go for You know you're going to continuation bet all your bluffs. You need to go for us. Just got to bet. Uh, you got to bet your hands. Um, I'll tell you this. I'm thinking about a bit more. I guess Elio Fox, the reason why he just called here was just like, 
Nicholas a step, five big blinds. I'll just play my hand a little bit differently. But you know, it, it was very surprising for him to just smooth call the ace king. But now he's going for the check raise on the flop, man. That's sneaky. And it's it's yeah, I don't see the two queens folding uh that flop. Well, not the flop, but we did see Gravy Boat fold his kings on the river. I mean, this is kind of what I get as well. And I'm like, Gravy Boat is picking up a lot of nice hands, but uh, he's not getting paid off on them. He was forced to fold the kings on the river. And at this point, he's sitting there, don't bet, don't bet, don't bet. Please don't bet, you know. <laughs> Please just try to make a move on me on the flop with some random low <laughs> pocket pair or whatever you have. Just don't bet. And now he knows that it's coming already. And Gravy Boat's got another very difficult decision to make here. Does make the fold immediately. He's like, that's it. I'm out. Well done. Hey, you were saying that Gravy Boat uh, keeps getting running high. He just keeps losing with those kings and queens and stuff like that. Uh, but correctly folding against Elio Fox. Wow, that pot could have been huge. That pot could be very different. Uh, we could have seen Gravy Boat lose almost all of his chips. Uh, it's been it's been an interesting final table so far. Alki's been very quiet, but he's been getting absolutely horrible hands, and it's obviously hard for Alki to make plays right with Elio Fox on his right with a big stack that can obviously always three bet uh, pretty light. Sebastian has a pretty decent hand here in the small blind against big blind battle. The king queen suited will absolutely at least call, but I think you could even make an argument for three betting this. Definitely not three betting at this point when there's a Nicholas Estet so short. Uh, that's why Elio Fox played his hand passively, and that's why Elki, you know, yeah, he hasn't been in cards, but he should be playing passively too right now. Just mm -hmm. wait for a Nicholas Estet to get it in. Uh, Elio Fox trying to put his, uh, use those chips to put some pressure on, on Sebastian, and it puts a small bet out there, but I don't, I'm not holding the King Queen suited. Yeah, I don't got too many clean outs, but uh, this bet size. And he's got a lot of chips behind. Uh, definitely calling. Oh, okay. He will make the call, but the turn is no good either. I do feel like this is a bit of a shame because if Elio Fox bets again now, I do think King Queen is going to fold. And then it is kind of a waste of your very pretty hand, no? It is, but you know, you still have to be a bit cautious. And you are going to lose like, extra pots in there. Um, mm -hmm. But like you three bet this hand. Elio Fox just four bet ace three suited. So. You might three bet the king queen suited and actually waste such a good hand that could have saw a flop close the action and stuff like that uh, had he opted to three bet. Um, so I think it's it's playing out okay at Elio Fox. It's tough because his opponent could could easily have an ace here and he's just burning mm -hmm. chips that would they would never fold. Um, but maybe he just thinks his opponent has a ten and goes for it. But uh, I I don't fault him. It's just. The king queen should just check too. It's just, it's got enough showdown value. Yeah, Sebastian is going to be very happy to see that his king high is good here. So he does still pick up the 600,000 chips in the end. Very well done. Yeah. I mean, now that you pointed out, since Nicholas is that short, maybe you don't have to three bet in those scenarios. Because what do you do if you get four bet, right? Then you're forced to fold king queen as well. So. Just calling maybe made sense. And a good call on the flop by Sebastian. Nicholas Ostet is going to get it in. Elki's got half of my favorite hand, but he can't make the call. And Sebastian can't really make the call. And I don't even think Gravy Boat can make the call. Yeah, this was yeah. a great moment for Nicholas to ship it in. Absolutely awful hands in the small blind and the big blind. And he picks up a pretty big pot for his standards. Yeah, he picked up a huge pot for his standards. And the blinds just went up to tease him, though. That's pretty funny. So he's now still at 5.5 big blinds. This would be the wrong moment for Sebastian to get out of line with his queen nine. As we know that the rebuy guy is sitting on ace queen. Gravy boat with a suited a3 is going to get out of the way. And rebuy guy is like, what? Really? Why didn't you shove this round, Nicholas asked that. I would have absolutely called you this time. Yeah. For sure. Um, you know, Rebag Guy is our chip leader, but besides the two queens he played, you know, I'm just wondering, how did he get the chip lead, right? I, I guess it was all from those two queens against uh, Elio Fox's ace three yeah. suited. Okay, 7-5 just gives Nicholas a set a walk. A little bit interesting. Uh, probably would have just blindly shipped it in and be like, look, I've got 4 million chips. Uh -oh. I'm going to win the pot sometimes. And Yeah, but... Well I think it's Nicholas bad, right? is in trouble this round, Nanonoko. I really think he's in serious trouble this one. I mean, Elio Fox shouldn't get 
crazy here with his mediocre hand. Sebastian should get out of the way, but Gravy Boat should absolutely open this one. Rebuy guy. Oh, oh Gravy Boat folded. Wow. Because Nicholas Estet 100% would be out because it's 1 5 yeah. dead. But now he's got a chance to get a double. Now he's going to flip. I didn't see many sevens or kings across the board, though. And there will be a king on the flop. And that means that Nicholas Asset is still in all sorts of trouble. And Gravy Boat is like, nice. This is why I fold with my six. Oh, no. Is it possible? Oh. <laughs> Where's the middle one? Where's the <laughs> middle one? <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't there. And that's going to be it for Lena 900. Speedy double. Or just Nicholas Asset. No back-to-back -back second places for him or even a victory. Finishes in seventh place. Walks away still with $70,000 though. And our next hand, Nanonoko, could actually become pretty big as well as Chris Rudolph picks up the eights. Oh, Elky immediately Elky. ships the A7. <laughs> oh, no. Ilya Fox, oh. take, out, take out your guy. <laughs> but I didn't see many aces across the board, right? Nobody else fallen in this? There's definitely a chance, man. That, that last sweat was actually super close with the two fives. I actually thought it got there. That was one of the best yeah. ones I've seen so far. But, man, Ilya Fox, get to get it in. Come on, Elky, ace. Elky. Just Ready, one hot. time, Elky. Just one time, Elky running out. Just, yes, oh! there's the ace. Elky spikes the ace on the flop. Makes two pair on the turn. Obviously, that doesn't change anything. Needs to avoid a queen. That's not pain. Elky with the double up through your guy. Nananoka, that's what you get for being a terrible friend and not picking <laughs> Elky to win the tournament. <laughs> well, hey, look. Elky running hot, right? Like, it's a, remember, he won King Jack offsuit against two kings. He just won A7 against two queens at the final table. Elky is, he's, look, just get it in because you always have a chance to hit that flop turn in the river. It doesn't matter what you have. Just chill out. El Elky's going to, I think, I really feel like Elky's going to get a top three performance today regardless. It just seems like, it seems like his day when you start winning these hands. And it's a beautiful double up for Elki. Chris Rudolph also had the eight, so he put in some extra money. It wasn't even just a double up, right? It's like he getting, mm -hmm. he's getting the money from Chris as well. Uh, Elio Fox does flop good here as he flops top pair with a king kicker. We know what a Sebastian terrible day this. for for Elio Fox. The more you okay, he's made some plays. They didn't work. He gets it in good. It doesn't work. like it. Just kind of been a. It's been a funny day for Elio Fox, but not, not so funny for him now. He's actually the shortest stack now, huh? With six people left. Yep. And he is a 32% VPIP ice cube. You hate to see it when you're the only ice cube on the table. You look around you and you see all these little flames and you're the ice cube. You're like, oh, come on. <laughs> I think Sebastian could actually bet here, right? With two overs oh, for and sure. a gut shot. I would be betting because it's a blind versus blind spot. Your opponent can have like ace X, King X is that obviously beat you. You got a lot of a lot of chances to win. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a bit of a small bet, in my opinion. I would like to go a little bit bigger, maybe like 200K. I don't know. I think you get some side calls from like some like uh, some weaker hands. Uh, so, but I don't know. Maybe he can trick his opponent. Elio does make the call. He hits the queen. This is a terrible day for Elio. I, remember how you said I used to curse everyone? I think, I think it's coming <laughs> back. I'm, I'm cursing the Elio Fox really hard today. At this point, Sebastian is like, can I get some extra value out of potentially an 8 or whatever? Uh, I feel like at this point, you would pretty much be targeting an 8, right? Because the way that Elio Fox played the hand, I think an 8 makes a lot of sense. Or could a passive a six, 9. Could be, could be a yeah. passive 9 sometimes, but not likely. A lot of times, they would just keep betting. Like you said, the 8 is the most likely hand. I'd be betting like 200-something K. Mm -hmm. um, seems but reasonable. the real crying call. Speaking of 185. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just thinking. You know, you know how you mentioned it's 225k. I was gonna say, like, you see everyone with a fire. Imagine it's just live poker, right? Like, just people are literally have these flame auras around them. And you just like ice cold there. You're just looking around. It's it'd be so hilarious. <laughs> he makes oh the call no, out. he makes the call to will receive the bad news that he was beat on the river. And at this point, things get very dire for Elio Fox as he's now down to 11 big blinds. Yeah, that's uh, Elio Fox is. I think he's he's getting a little bit. Uh, I feel like a little tilted a little bit. I don't know if that last time was a tilt, but you can feel like just things are just going so poorly. Obviously, losing that big pot to Elky, you know, just just Ooh. a bunch of funny hands. Um, 
nice nice uh, hand for a gravy boat here, obviously. Uh, it's just been a disaster. I would like to see gravy boat check one more time. I like the check. Just let the opponent try to represent that ace, king, ace, queen. Yeah, and that is exactly what happens. I mean, picture perfect play so far by gravy boat. I actually really like the way that the Irishman has played tonight. Just everything kind of makes sense. Couple of good folds, tough folds with the kings, with the queens. But well done. Played his sixes perfectly so far as well. Uh, I think you can make an argument for check raising here. Obviously, if your opponent does have a strong ace. Oh, nice. They don't have a strong ace. He will just call. Rebar guy makes a queen, so it will go check, check on the river. I would have liked to maybe see him put in the raise on the turn. Because let's say Rebar guy does have ace, jack, ace, queen, ace, king. Wouldn't he, I guess he always pay you off? I guess he thought that his a block two aces, but uh, he get a, little, a little bit of action from Sebastian, maybe, probably. But I want to say that maybe he thought his opponent actually would fold ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack to a check raise. Because to be fair, Gravy Pope would look really strong if he check raised that turn. And he was just like, uh, if he's going to fold those hands, I might as well just let him try to try to self-value better or whatever. So, But I do agree with, in general, probably would go for a check raise. Uh, but uh, I guess he really thought he wouldn't get looked up. Because if you think about it, though, Gravy Pope has been passive with those two kings, right, uh, earlier, like, then you think if someone plays two kings like that, they probably are making some sick play on you, you know? So uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. To be fair, when he made that play, there was Nicholas Ostad with five big blinds. So maybe that was like a moment where mm. people didn't really want to get out of line. And we have a short stack now, which was our previous ship leader, Elio Fox. He came in with over 50 big blinds tonight, but he only has 11 left. I gotta say, a real feels bad moment for Elki when he opened up his aces and got absolutely no action. I, I mean, can't, he can't complain though, right? He can't complain too much. I mean, obviously, a7, just remember, a7 offsuit, and you're like, okay, it's okay. I'll just pick up those blinds and answers with the two aces. But uh... Elki folding 8 5 suited there on the big blind. Would you say that's always a definite fold, or would you say it's okay to maybe throw in one chip what, every once in a while? What, what, what hand did he have? I, I didn't see. 8 5 suited. 8-5 suited, oh, I probably yeah. would have threw in a chip. But, you know, Elki, he, he understands ICM pretty well. I think he's just thinking, look, Elio Fox, 11 big blinds, Ice Cube, he's going to bust soon. Chip leader <laughs> opening to me, put pressure on me. I wouldn't fault Elki for calling, but, uh, you know, if you want to play a little bit tighter, definitely yeah. seems reasonable. Well, Elio Fox does throw in a chip against the raise of the rebuy guy. And once again, his king eight doesn't really go anywhere. Reba guy will probably keep betting this. This is a pretty all right flop for nines, I'd say. Jack, check four. Doesn't get I mean, much it's as, better. As good that. as it gets uh, when a guy only has like less than 10 big blinds. Obviously, you don't really want action though, because like usually this short stack check call you on a flop, like, oh God, he's always got a jack. Yeah. <laughs> <He's> got <it. laughs> it's all right though. It's all right. Uh, man, it sucks. This sucks. Yeah, I don't mind the fault. It just sucks. Man, Elio Fox is just going down and down and down. I guess the question is, right, uh, Roddy, is when does my guy bust? Is it uh, within five hands? Within ten hands? It's <laughs> guaranteed sixth place at this point. You know, poker is pretty evil sometimes, right? But it does really feel right now that if you're Elio Fox, that all five of them are against you. And they're always just staring at you. It's like, when do you get out of their way? <laughs> I had a, uh, I was playing a hyper turbo last week on stream as Sebastian actually flops trips here, but Gravy Boat doesn't have anything. And we know that Gravy Boat doesn't really waste too many chips. And it was like one of these turbos where multiple people had like five blinds, but I had two blinds. And I kept surviving, and eventually I was forced all in at the big blind. But I actually doubled up with Jack Four against Kings or something. And I was like, "Yes," but I still only had two big blinds, and all of them at both tables just waited. And I was like, "Man, this is ridiculous! All eleven of them are against me at this point." You know, poor little runner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's the thing. It's with someone so short, you, you should be waiting for them. Um, yeah. And it was yeah, a bubble, hey. by the way. Like top eleven got paid. So I, I finished. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's brutal. Um, in this hand, Sebastian, you know, limp pot, bet the flop. It actually went tricky on the turn. I don't like the turn check that much. I just feel like you just hope your opponent has a hand. But uh, maybe his passive play on the turn will maybe get his opponent to, to put in some extra chips somehow. But uh, he's got a bet now. 
He's got a bad small though if he wants Gravy Boat to call. Gravy Boat is no, there's no way that Gravy Boat ever calls it. I don't believe it. The way that Gravy Boat has played, he made correct falls with the kings, correct fold with the queens. I don't see him putting 444k in a minute with ace high. No kicker. Yeah, I, I don't think he should either, but maybe it's, it is a funny line. But, uh, you know, maybe you're like, man, I folded this hand, I folded that hand, and eventually these folds start to turn into yeah, calls, yeah, yeah. right? Because you're just, well, I've been folding too much. And I'm telling you, man, they put in some more. He keeps folding these hands. He, he's going to be calling soon, but that's a nice fold, and I think he played it just fine. Well, if Aoki opens here, there's a good chance that Elio Fox is going to get it in. Yeah, of course. Uh, King Queen, I think he's got to go for it. Like, so the thing is, you got a you hand, and you're just you got to look around at the table and you're like, wow, no one even has 1 million chips. I got to <laughs> just go for it. <laughs> it is a bit scary though, because Elke has been passive so far at this final table, right? So maybe at this point, Elio Fox is like, oh man, what if he's got me absolutely dominated, ace king, ace queen? Yeah, I understand that. The thing is, yeah. what are you waiting for? You got, you don't have many chips left. Elke is still going to open some hands. You're coin flipping a lot. And you're ahead a decent amount, too. Here we well, go. Elke doesn't hesitate for a second and will receive the good news that A7 is in the lead for now. Can it hold? Oh, oh my goodness. God. Elke running really hard at this point, drawing that <laughs> on the turn just one time. <laughs> wow. Elke with some serious run good as we are now down <laughs> to five. And that is going to be the end of Elio Fox. He came in as chip leader. <laughs> ends in sixth place but when you get the nano curse on top of you then it is hard to actually make a proper run <laughs> wow and elki just used five emojis in that sequence ever since the flop of six different six. emojis going on <laughs> <laughs> what a run wow. is elki the, no elki is second in chips at this point all right just the rebuy guy He's yeah still chip leading <laughs> been pretty wow four bust outs already and and we haven't even reached the first break yet. And this, we actually have a very proper match. Look at the stack yep. sizes. No one is short. Oh. Everyone's got about 30 big blinds. Nope. I really feel that we are about to witness some real proper poker between these five. Like everybody has the potential to make some plays. Everybody's got stacks. And I like the way that these five have been playing so far as well. Obviously, Elke has been getting pretty lucky. But, uh, you know, luck is part of these final tables, Nananaka. That's all right, man. Look, uh, Elke, like, it does seem like you finally, you might finally pick another winner today. You know, Elki's oh. running hot. It's a good friend, right? And he's been running freaking hot, but what? He's just dusting off chips now. He just blasted off the jack dudes. Just like I've had too many chips. I play my best when I get it all in bad. If I have too many chips, I'm gonna get it in good, and I might not win it. <laughs> 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 He's gonna keep emojiing. Yeah, Elke might want to slow down. Slow your roll, matey. Like that was great. You got up to three million. We're back to two point three. <laughs> That's gravy boat is sitting there. He's like, man, I'm folding kings and queens, and Elke is dusting off chips with Jack Deuce. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, dude, the second all those short stacks busted, people just going nuts. Elke blasting off of Jack Deuce suited. Chris Rudolph just three bit ace four off suit. Like, like, like we said. We've got a match now. Yep. Would love to see Gravy Boat tag along. Already made one set. Can he make his second set of this final table? I mean, he would always just call here, right? Of course. Uh, but, oh, what? well, Ken. Three bed oh, jam. I love it. I love it. The gravy Boat. <laughs> He's like, I've had enough of folding post flop. <laughs> Everybody's making plays against me. Everybody's out flopping me. I'm just going to get it all in. Wow, what a move. Things are changing, man. Like, just telling you, man, all the shorts, they're like, let's play some poker. Let's just attack each other. Elkie's open in and of the ace 10 against the queen A. This is a fair fight. It's mid pair versus the over card and, you know, and a straight draw. And I like to see Elkie throw in a bet here. You're going to win the pot a lot and probably consider throwing two bets. Reba guy is going to stick around, though. Second pair is still good at this point. The four of spades doesn't really change anything. If Reba guy checks here, I'd actually like to see Elki check. Uh, yeah. I know there's an argument. You can see it go for Oh, oh yeah, check hit the <laughs> ace, right? <laughs> 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 but um yeah, I, I think betting and checking are both fine with the ace ten. Yeah. Um just depend it's a bit of a guessing game, but uh yeah, it's all right. Win some chips, but I think Elki's just Running like, hot. look, 
I just lost some chips. Let me just uh, chill out a little bit and not value bet that last day. It's just there. Yeah. Well, so much for chilling out. He's going to open up 8-9 suited under the gun. Isn't it funny how we got rid of some short stacks? Elki got a couple chips. And all of a sudden, it's like, all right, welcome to the final oh. table, Elki. This is opening every hand. Chris Rudolph picked up on that. And he's like, yeah, I see what's happening over here. You are not the same man as you were before with 10% VPIP. Gravy boat with queens again, by the way. Yeah, for a guy who picks up a lot of hands, he has less chips than he started the final table with. Yeah, but there's not too much he could have done about it. I actually like the way that Oh, Elki is running freaking hot. He's running so yeah. hot. Just don't emoji before the hand's over, Elki. Don't give away your hand. I do feel sad. Like, I'm very happy for Elki. That is a great flop for him. But this is actually becoming brutal for Gravy Boat. All of his big hands just keep getting out flopped. It's actually kind of insane. And you remember what you said before? Eventually you have enough, right? Where you make correct <laughs> fold, correct fold, but it gets to you. And at one moment you just snap. And you're like, I'm not folding this one. And I have the feeling uh, that this is the moment. Gravy Boat is going to go all in. I actually think he's just going to go all in here. Well, I don't know if he'll go all in yet. He probably would just call, but like, like you said, like he's been folding these big oh. pairs a lot, big hands. He might call he's down snapping. now. No, no. He's just, he's, oh, yeah, he he's, just he's calling him. another turn bet, and Elki is going to have a ton of chips because Gravy Boat's had enough. The thing yeah. is also, as you keep making folds, obviously your stack size goes down. Then you start to be like, okay, if I fold now, I'm going to be left with like 10 big blinds. So no, I'm just calling it off and go for it. And you know what also comes into play is that Elki has all of a sudden played five or six hands in a row, right? Like at this mm -hmm. point, this is obviously something that Gravy Boat is very well aware of as well. He's like, I mean, this is like the Elki that became famous 15 years ago because he is aggressive and he likes to, you know, put pressure on people. But he's like, I've got a real hand this time. I've got queens. I don't think he can fold again. I, I, and I don't blame him. I don't think I can I mean, fold. <laughs> Gravy Boat is set up to lose more chips in his hand right now. Can Gravy Boat make one more? Just one more fold, Gravy Boat. Just one more fold. He can't do it right now. One million chips behind. And that is a pretty brutal run out as well, because maybe if Elki was bluffing with 9-10 or 5-6, you know, then... Elki bets really quick there, by the way, on the river. Did you notice that? Yeah, but you probably would follow through if you had a bluff. It probably doesn't matter that much. I wouldn't... Something to think about, but uh, Elki plays fast. Actually, he plays really fast yeah. in general. Regardless, Gravy Boat's in a tough spot. That's the thing. You got two queens. You're like, can I make one more good fold? And you know what he's thinking about too? Okay, I fold. What? I have 13. Oh, oh my God. He's emoji <laughs> mid-hand. Oh, emoji wow. mid-hand. We don't see that very often. He's trying to... No. He knows Gravy Boat is on the edge. Chill. It's just like he's been folding, folding, folding. You look at your... If I fold this hand, I'm left with 13 big blinds. Now my opponent just emojied me. And if I fold and get shown a bluff, that's going to look disastrous. There's a lot of things going through Gravy Boat's mind right now. And it's, it's all bad. I feel pretty rough for Gravy Boat. Like, he has been having a... Like, obviously, a top five finish is really good in the high roller Super Millions, but he's been getting monsters, and he just has not been able to do anything with him. And it's it's pretty brutal to watch. I feel like we've all been there where you had this one run where you're like, I just can't win a hand tonight, can I? Let's see if he can find a fold deep down inside. He made a correct fold with Kings. He made a correct fold with Queens before. Can he do it again? Or... Does this man have a limit and is enough enough? I think he's going to make the call. You know, there's only so much, so much a man can take, Nanonoko. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very bad. I mean, it's, it's like, like we said, all the things, there's just so many reasons for him to call. The emoji thing, does, does, does that possibly help Gravy Boat get away? I don't know. It just depends on how you interpret those things. It could really yeah. go both ways. Um, Whatever happens in his hand, Elki's going to have like 4 million in chips minimum, which is obviously a ton of chips. This guy is running hot, man. He's, a, he's been cooling people so hard. I'm not cooling. He's been getting lucky, but now he's really cooler as a bonnet. Um, Elki is just really running really, really hot. Now, can great people get... You got six minutes. You might as well use them before you go out, right? Like just get max value for your time here in this tournament. I, I still think he's going to call. I think like right now he's going over everything. He's like, could have nines, could have tens, or maybe with three bet those. It's like, does he really have an eight? 
What if he's just going YOLO with A7 or something like that? You know, a lot of things are possible. Here. A nice Gravy fold, Boat though. does make the fold, man. That guy is playing a phenomenal final table, Nanonoko. And it's weird because he came in with way more chips than he has right now. But very, very well done by Gravy Boat. I'm very impressed. Yeah. Elki just smooth calling two queens here in the small blind now. It's funny, his opponent just lost the two queens and then he gets rewarded the two queens. Um, but he's going to play it slow. And the reason he's playing slow is it's a bit of an ICM thing. That's mainly he's in second place. Flip leader's opening. Doesn't want to get it in. Um, but his opponent does flop a flush draw. And I don't fault him because, you know, Gravy Bolt's got one million chips. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, seems fine. Weebar guy with his uh, ace high flush draw. Is he going to put in some chips? No, he does not. That is not a pleasant card for Elki. <laughs> we know that he's still good, but you're going to be a little sad to see a king roll off on the turn there in a three way pot. And okay, it was very easy pot. It's just checking through. And I think Elki Shipper goes for a little bit of value. And I like the bet sizing, actually. You don't want to bet too big, you just want to hope for some crying calls. <laughs> gonna emoji again <laughs> yes he is <laughs> a good old shipping emoji all right guys that is going to do it for the first hour of the 21st final table of the high roller super millions a 10k buy event that starts in uh starts on the sunday evening and then the players play all the way down to nine and then we broadcast the final table live on the tuesday evening which is what we are currently doing it's been a very rough first hour for gravy boat but i honestly like the way that he has played he made a couple of great folds Elki is indeed running hot. The Reba guy is having a pretty smooth final table as well. As you guys can see, we have lost four players so far. All the players are taking a break. Nanonoko is already gone. I'm going to take a quick break as well. Of course, I would like to encourage all of you guys to follow this Twitch channel if you haven't done that yet. We broadcast the final table of this $10,000 buy-in event every Tuesday evening. And on top of that, there are a lot of giveaways on this channel, a lot of very fun uh, GG takeovers by some of the awesome members of the GG squad, like Kevin Martin, like Easton Dems and all that good stuff. Kakiti as well. A lot of very fun streams here, so please follow the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I'll see you guys in a couple of minutes. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everybody, to the 21st final, 21st edition of the High Roller Super Millions final table. As you guys can see, the breaks became a little bit shorter at GG Poker. I have noticed that as well, and that's why we are starting. That's why I came back a little bit earlier as well, because like, I think we have less time than we normally do. Then Anoko is still gone, but he'll be back real soon. I'll just uh, cover the first couple of hands we have without him. Let's see if I can hold my own. Chris Rudolph should open this one up. Queen 10 suited, five-handed, obviously a pretty strong hand. I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of rooting a little bit for Gravy Boat here because I really feel he's been having a tough run at this final table. It's so brutal to get queens, queens, and kings and being forced to fold all three of them. And he was right all three times. So he's making a great impression on me. But it would be awesome to see him win a couple of hands. I don't mind if he throws in a chip here with 6-7, and he does. Unfortunately, he doesn't flop anything and he's the only ice cube at this final table. Of course, if you guys live in a country where you can play online poker, I would encourage all of you guys to use GGTV as a promo code. If you feel like you want to join in on the action, you guys can do that. A couple of awesome promotions and giveaway waiting for you. This LP is going to open up Ace-9 in the second hand and he's going to take this one down. And Anoko is back in the seat as well. No, no, we just continued where we left. Elki is raising, Elki is taking down pots. I think I have picked my second winner, maybe. <laughs> you, you might have, and he's just flopping oh sets. Oh my god. <laughs> Man, Elki running hot. Right, Elki is running hot. Um, and here's the bet, and Chris Rudolph, if Elki, I was going to say, if Elki is running hot, Chris Rudolph is going to turn two pair. And he did, did turn two pair. I'm not surprised. Uh. Well, Elki might be a little bit intimidated. Obviously, on one hand, you're happy to see that your opponent's betting into you. That three is a scare card, though, because now obviously there is four to a straight. Any dues, any seven makes a straight. Chris Rudolph is probably going to slow down. I won't be surprised if Elki checks back here. Or would you say he will still bet? He might just check, but uh, I'm trying to think of this. What did he lose this to? Hmm. I, I think I would go for a bet. Two fives. Uh, I don't fault it if it's a check. A uh, four deuce of diamonds is a pretty reasonable hand that you would lose to, but yeah, I like the bet because um, you can represent two hearts still, especially when your opponent bets not that big on a turn. And I, Chris Rudolph is uh, he's in a tricky spot because uh, his opponent Elki would probably play two hearts this way as well, and he's probably thinking, look, you wouldn't bet if you didn't have a straight or two, right? And the thing is, Elki actually is betting without a straight, so uh, that's wrong. But he's probably thinking that right now. He's like, okay, if you had ace king, you're not going to bet. If you had ace queen, you're not going to bet. Even if you had a set, you might not bet. But, uh, you know, this is very well played, actually, so far. Let's see what Chris Rudolph decides to do on the river with his two pair. If he does make the call, he's obviously putting Elki on just a strong ace, right? Uh, ace jack, ace ten, that kind of stuff. I think more two hearts, to be exact. Because like I said, I think ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack would just check back the river. And they should. Four straight from the big blind. Yeah, you wouldn't be betting those hands. So I guess Chris Rudolph is thinking, how often does Elki actually have two hearts here? And play the hand the way he did. And the truth is, I think two hearts would play this way. Uh, ten jack of hearts, queen, king, queen of hearts, king, jack of hearts. They, they definitely would play the hand this way. Uh yeah, <laughs> it's just a, it's a pretty bad spot for Chris Rudolph. But people have been making good folds today. Mm -hmm. I think it's very possible Chris Rudolph makes another good fold. But um, I don't know. I think Chris Rudolph making some folds too. So like he's going to start to want to call down too a little bit. And I, I think guess Elki would have bet a tiny bit smaller. I think Chris Rudolph would always call. Like if this was 400, mm -hmm. 450K, I think he would always call. 600K, I'm not too sure about yeah, still close, though. It's a tough spot, uh, and that's a very nice fold there. Um, but also, I want to give a uh, hats off to Elki. That's a nice value bet with 2-5. Mm -hmm. Some people just get scared when they see uh, a 4 straight. But given the line, it does make a lot of sense that his hand is good. And we got, what do we have? A new chip leader. <laughs> Elki is the first player tonight to get over 5 million chips. Uh, this could actually become an interesting hand as Elki flops the open-ended straight draw. Reba guy makes top pair. Why do I feel like even Elki is surprised he's the chip leader all of a sudden, right? It's like a little bit too soon for him. He's like, wow, I'm actually the chip leader 5'11". It's got to be pretty, pretty amazing. And now he's betting out here. 
and he hits oh. the nine. Oh, actually, that's bad because I good. thought it was good news because he's running so hot. I thought he won the spot with his river card. It was actually better two pair for a rebuy guy. Uh, makes a, a big bad rebuy guy will make the call immediately, and Elki receives the bad news that his nine is no good. Now we have a new chip leader. <laughs> it is rebuy guy, the second player to be over five million chips tonight. I don't think Halki really deserves to be putting the running cold emoji as uh, he did go from 1 million chips to 4 million, but it's all good. Why does it feel like Elki, he wins chips and he just dusts off a little bit, right? Not too, <laughs> he doesn't, that's a good thing, he doesn't dump a lot of chips off, right? He just dumps a little bit off. Um, but uh, I think actually the way he played that last hand is, is, is just fine with the 7 9. Yeah, Bet yeah. to straight draw. You hit two, you hit two pair, right? Uh, nines and the sixes on the board, and you, you want to go for some value. I think it's played fine, just just the way things are. When uh, you're running hot, you got to dust off. See the things you got to throw away some chips here and there so you can continue running hot. <laughs> We've got two weak aces going up against each other. Ace eight offsuit against ace nine, and ace eight offsuit will actually take it. Good job there by Sebastian betting that board. Very weird, actually. He just let out half the pot into the chip leader. Very uncharacteristic. But the, you know what? That actually looks kind of strong. I know it looks weak generally, but like you lead into a chip leader. There's a guy of eight big blinds. It actually looks stronger than than you might think. And yeah. the ten seven suit. Just throw those chips in. Gravy boat can't call you. Yeah, but Sebastian on the other end may be thinking, he's like, well. Do I really want to throw away 800,000 chips? Because what if he does call me with a king 10? I'm in really bad shape. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. But uh, this this is actually a mandatory shove. Oh, wow. That's a big fold. Um, Sebastian's being kind of a little bit... Uh, All over the taking place. Taking lines. Yeah, a little bit out of the place in some spots. Um, I, I don't think anyone else would have. I don't know. It's just kind of weird. But uh, that's all right. He's still in the tournament, unlike some of these guys, right? Elio Fox is four betting ace three suit. He's out of the tournament now. Timothy Newther, three bet jamming queen ten suit. He's out. So you know what? It's if it worked for Sebastian, yeah. just just do I what you gotta with the do. With ten seven, I, I think you just shove it and close your eyes and hope that he folds. And if he does call, then just hope your life right, because ten seven does all right against even bigger hands. I'll tell you this, man. If if you, maybe you didn't solve those spots too well, those small blind big blind, but if it seems close, it, just ask yourself, is it suited? Yes, insta-shove. You know what I mean? Like, the suited <laughs> is always the thing that just pushes you over the line. Well, if Gravy Boat decides to go for it here, he'd be in trouble. He does make a, another correct fall. This time it's just pre-flop, though. Reba guy may feel like he should open because he's the chip leader, but Chris Rudolph is not going anywhere this end with his pocket jacks. Oh, he's not getting any action yet. Ooh! Tricky. He's prepping. It might work. I don't know. Does Elki does Elki punish limps uh, in this spot? Oh. He does punish Elki again. Hey, let me just gift these chips over to you. Here you go. Here, take them. Take them back. <laughs> <laughs> well done there by Chris Rudolph setting up the trap and immediately coming over the top with the all in. This Ooh. time it's Gravy Boat with the jacks. Elki. Ah, Actually, it's... tough spot. It's a very tough spot for King Queen. Yeah. It might just fold. Um, Gravy because ball, it's Sebastian wish. behind him as well, right? Like, that's exactly. also a bit scary. And it's, what's important is how much Sebastian behind him has. If Sebastian had, like, 15 big blinds, I think the King Queen can usually probably maybe make a call. But, like, with Sebastian with 27 big blinds behind, it's like, if you reshub, Sebastian wakes up hand, it's actually really disastrous. King Queen, not that far ahead of a 10 big blind under the gun shove. But he's still going to make a call. I don't fault him, but I can see how a fold would have been just fine. And Elki, do the running hot thing. Just queen it. Oh. Well, running cold at this point. Drawing <laughs> that on the turn. Not even a little bit of hope. No 9, no 10. And Gravy Boat with the double up. So he's back to 2.2 million. He finally gets paid off on one of his big hands. He's like, ah, so if I just go pre-flop all in, it can't go that wrong. That's what I should have done with the queens and the kings and the other queens. And Elki goes from 5 million chips back to 2.5 million real quick. And all and of a sudden, insta he's raise one of the this 9-7 offsuit. Insta-raise. Elki on tilt now. But, um, uh, I mean, Sebastian, he's got two fours here. Doesn't he, he strikes me. Okay, Jam, I was going to say, he strikes me as someone who's going to fold this hand because he's been playing some spots a little bit passively, interestingly. But, uh, 
Now he three bet jams two fours. But this is a fine play. It is twenty six big blinds, but calling is is worse uh, by far. Um, unless you always hit a set, <laughs> but in general, and with pocket fours, uh, with pocket fours, the odds are in your favor in the knocker. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think actually that that play is superior. I would um, jam, and then fold. Then call is like my last option in that spot. Pretty decent flop here for Gravy Boat as he flops two overs and a flush draw. Picks up a little bit of extra equity on the turn with the gut shot as well. And they both pick up a gut shot, actually. I'd like to see Gravy Boat put in a bigger bet here. The rebound guy doesn't like to call if he uh, doesn't have a lot going for himself. I've noticed that. It's like, eh, it's just not worth it. Too many bad cards on the river. It's like, I'm not yeah. emotionally invested in this pot. I don't really care. <laughs> this is going to fold. I feel like Rebuy Guy's actually been really solid. Hasn't been too out of line, but somehow has the chip lead. That's the thing. Just somehow has a chip lead. I did, he did come into the final table in third, I believe, with a lot of chips. Um, but yeah. That is correct. I would say the most aggressive player, though, is Chris Rudolph by far. Seems to be taking some three bet bluffs. Um, I'd say over the last yeah. 20 hands, it's Elky, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it is told to do those two guys. Elki yeah. and uh, Chris Rudolph have been the most aggressive. Gravy Boat's been really solid in folding a bunch. Chris Rudolph decides to shove the King Jack suited from the small blind. Fortunately for him, Elki did not have a hand. Sebastian with pocket kings. I really hope that Elki doesn't get crazy here with King 8. We'll just limp. I feel bad about this hand for Elki. Two kings. Sebastian's just been hanging in there, getting some nice situations. Uh, I think he raises up. No action, though. Oh, he Elkie plays so went, fast. He plays so Elkie fast, but you're saying? from chip leader to the shortest step <laughs> in, like, seven hands. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it was so fast. It was, like, so, so fast. But he plays his best game when he gets it all in pre-flop. <laughs> With King Jack against Kings or A7 against Queens? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was like, in the break, I said, I'm kind of cheering for Gravy Boat. I hope that he does well, but, you know, <laughs> doubling up through Elki is not what I had in mind. Then I'm like, uh, do it through the Rebuy guy. He's got plenty of chips. <laughs> yeah. Strangely, though, we are still kind of in a similar situation where everyone has pretty similar stack. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of... And they've been battling a bit more. So it's, it's just, this is the fun part of the tournament. Sebastian is going to open from the bottom with Jack-10 offsuit and Gravy Boat. Would you say that you should always 3-bet or is calling fine as well? Depends on your overall strategy. It looks like it's just 3-bet jam, Queen-Jack suited. Um, the only problem calling is obviously you kind of cap your hand a little bit. Uh, people tend to squeeze you a bit more and it kind of sucks. Um, so it's, you just got to think about these things, uh, but it seems fine. Rebuy guy, Queen-Jack suited. Hopefully he doesn't three bet jam because he'll be running today's king. Uh oh, oh what a flop! Elki does have the ace of hearts. Well, there's gonna be a lot of chips in the middle here, one way or the other. There's no way that rebuy guy folds here. Oh and he no! Makes the flush on the turn. Elki is drawing very slim at this point. He needs another heart on the river, or he's in all sorts of trouble. I think Elki's gonna go all in, and rebuy guy is gonna call. This is very bad news for Elki. Elki might, oh, man. Does you, the question is, do you call or do you just jam? The thing is, you got 18 big blinds. It does make the call, and that's a bad river card, obviously. Rebuy guy will ship it in. I don't know if Elki can fold. You got the ace of hearts. That's important because you do block some flushes, and your opponent is representing a flush. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, Rebuy guy, like you said, hasn't been very out of line. He really has only been doing this with hands where he had it. He did lead into Elki on the turn. So, in a way, it is a pretty obvious flush, but... Uh, it's so difficult to fold the ace king here. It is very difficult. And Elki definitely should be using the time bank here. Um, his opponent is representing flush. He does have a flush. <laughs> um, the obvious. Rebuy guy, okay, what hands? Let's think about hands he could be bluffing with. And it's mainly king queen offsuit with one heart. Yeah. Uh, king jack offsuit with one heart. But does king jack flat the small blind? I don't know oh. so much. That's a very nice fold from Elki. 
Very, very nice. well done indeed. It does leave him a little crippled as Alki now drops down to 14 big blinds. But at least he's still in the tournament. Very well done indeed. Ah, that's tough, man. With the Ace of Hearts as well, like, whew. That is uh, one hell of a fold by Alki. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, but it, if you think about it, it is hard for a Brie Bad guy to be bluffing besides the King Queen offsuit. I just don't think mm -hmm. he's defending King Jack offsuit from the small blind against Elki in that spot. Um, very good hand reading from Elki, but obviously a disaster result. And uh, Chris Rudolph actually folded Ace Jack as well here. Um, and well, wow, Elki just lets go of the 10-9 the mid pair. And this has been a disaster. It almost seems like those hands where he got ran hot just never happened because he's only got 1 million chips. Yep. That's kind of where he started the night with, though. In that way, you could say he's like, well, I let it up a couple places. <laughs> Elki might get it all in here with the pocket fives, and he should be able to get it through. Obviously, Sebastian and Gravy both can't really call with the hands that they have. So Elki does pick up two big blinds. That's going to be very useful to him. Uh-oh. Don't ship it, Elki. Don't do it. Don't uh, know. It's, yeah, it's real tempting. I don't fault him, man. Sebastian obviously going to get in. Can but Elki man, he runs hot. He can find that jack. It's somewhere on the deck. Just just gotta peel it out. Yep. I don't believe any of the other three players had a jack. So can we get a jack? The flop uh, doesn't really promise a whole lot of good. The turn doesn't change anything. It's a jack and a jack only for Elki. Paint? Nope. Oh, king, he did but hit, but the wrong card. Yeah. King is no good, and that means that Elki will be eliminated in fifth place. And yeah, that's gotta sting a little bit. 17 minutes ago, Elki was the chip leader, and now he's out <laughs> in fifth. That's how quick things can go at these final tables. I love Elki. Uh, I mean, that uh, hey, it's, you know what? It's all right. He got top five. He, he, had, he had a good run. Yeah. It is so crazy, though, right? Like, he was chip leader, out, but then so fast. Sometimes take an hour to bleed out and bust, right? He was like, bam, 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 and just like, he's just out of the tournament. Same thing happened to Elio Fox. He had a lot of chips, bam, 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 out of the tournament. And uh, top five is still good, Roddy. It, it, it's sad to see Elki go. He was actually driving to action really well, but uh, he made a good fold day his king, but sometimes you just bust. The 9-7 hands really hurt him, eh? Uh, mm. with the sixes on board and the nine on the river. If that's not a nine on the river, then, you know, that's a completely different. Imagine if Elki does hit his straight, then he's not just a chip leader, but he will be the dominant chip leader. And we would have been looking at a very different scenario, but that's going to do it. Obviously, great news for the other four players. They ladder up. If you get eliminated in fourth place, you do walk away with $150,000. So a great night for these guys, regardless. Not even an Elki emoji Ooh. to send him goodbye. That makes me sad as well. Come on, guys. We're at a table, Menace. <laughs> you know, Sebastian has just wow. really stepped up his game. He just check-raised the King-9 offsuit. Uh, you know, he, he C-bet big on that last one against Elki of Ace Jack. God's opponent to fold him pair. And Sebastian's the new man. You know what? He was like, I don't like that these commentators didn't like that I folded the 10-7 suit in the small blind. I'm just going to wreck it, wreck these fools right now. He's the chip leader. He's actually the new chip leader. Yep. Uh, and I actually think the way Sebastian played, he's got, he got some different moves than some of the other guys. So these some of these regs, like uh, Gra Gravy Bo, Chris Rudolph, and Rebag Guy, they might not breed into him that well in some spots. And what that happens is either A, well, they – they have a bigger edge or B they actually you create your own edge because of people adjusting incorrectly to you so we're actually going to have a very interesting we've shifted this chip lead around right we've had yeah. Elio Fox obviously a chip leader we had Rebuy guy for a chip leader for a while we had Elki for a chip leader for a little bit <laughs> um, but now it's Sebastian and this has been a bit a bit crazy wild yep. gravy boat makes a good uh, bet there with his king queen and he's going to be able to take this one down I'm I'm in camp gravy boat right now, man. Like I feel like he has played very solid. Obviously, Sebastian is really coming alive in these last few hands, and has made a couple of great bets there. But I just wish the best for gravy boat. He had such a tough time with all his premium pocket pairs. Let's see if he uh, decides to go a little crazy here with the Ace Nine. Would be a correct he, moment he to might, do so. He might just ship it in. Um, you know, like some of these guys, he he's been three bet shipping some uh some hands that other guys wouldn't take. Uh, but, you know, he's a tournament player. 
He knows that people won't call him too lightly. I wouldn't fault him for calling, and he doesn't like to flatten the small blinds. So I think he, mm -hmm. I think this is a fine play. Obviously, uh, when you get called, it's you're never ahead, but uh, <laughs> you it's okay because you slowly chip up and then you put yourself in opportunities to open raise and stuff like this. Yeah. Well, even if you do get called, most of the time your ace could be live, and if your ace is not live, then your nine should be live, and there's. A any chance that you're flipping but i like it and he always gives a flush to all potential as well like i think ace nine offsuit he could just fold but i like to ship it with ace nine suited and make it easy for yourself as well right it's so hard to play those hands out of position post flop so why not keep the game simple nano hey, and then what i what else say, say, if it's suited and you're not sure just push it in close your eyes i'll keep that in mind this week when i play <laughs> like and then you send me a hand history yeah uh i'm out <laughs> Uh, much sooner than normal. <laughs> so down to four. I feel like Chris Rudolph has also been cooling down, though. Like he, he had a little moment in the previous hour where he was winning a couple of hands in a row, but the last 20, 30 minutes been very quiet for the Austrians. Well, you know what? It just seems like no one actually has been in like commanding lead, taking control. It's kind of just been passing around, taking turns. Um, and no, the only. There's only one time when I felt like someone was dominating for a very short amount of time, and that was Elki, but it was gone so fast. It was like for those three to five minutes. Uh, but other than that, it's been very calm a little bit, and uh, no one taking control. Ravy Boat is probably going to open up his King 9 suited here. Let's see how Revi Guy decides to play his Ace 8 suited. He is going to make the call from the small blind. And he won't flop anything. This is kind of what I mentioned before. It's hard to play those ace, eight, ace, nine hands out of position post flop, right? Yeah, you're going to flop a lot of crap like this. It's like, <laughs> uh, no, it's true. You're exactly right. Um, but, you know, people have different perspectives on how they should play hands, right? Gravy Bow obviously likes to reshove a little bit more uh, with these, uh, you know, good hands, but, you know, doesn't like, he doesn't bleed, right? But obviously, when he gets it in, he might be out really quickly, but he doesn't like call two big blinds, call three big blinds, and fold two bets and stuff like this. It's very different style. Whereas you know, other guys like to see flops, and Rebuy guy, you know, saw flop and actually depends on his post flop ability to to take down some uh, pots that maybe he shouldn't normally win. Gravy boat will take this one down with his ace queen offsuit. Nobody else really had anything. I feel like tonight we've had a lot of. Uh... Little moments where one player has a good hand and then the other three or the other four just have absolutely nothing. Chris Rudolph decides to just get it all in with the ace eight as the short stack. Now we're already at level 33 and the blinds just went up. And if we keep playing like this, the blinds will go up even quicker. They don't go up by time, but in the top left side of the table, you guys can see that it goes up by the amount of hands we play. And if we keep playing hands at this pace, Nananoko, the blinds are going to get real big real soon. They do play pretty quick, uh, now that I think about it, right? Like, some of these uh, actions have been very, very snap quick. Uh, obviously, they've taken times in the, the tough river decisions, but in general, every other street's been pretty pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Gravy Boat is the one who used most of his time clock, but obviously had a couple of very difficult decisions with his queens. And he was correct after taking some time. I would have smashed that button on that board with the 8-8 seven or eight eight six whatever it was a long time ago and i would have been out in seventh or eighth place as i often do at final tables i'm not gravy but he used his time and he made the correct call yeah. and he's back to three million right now now that's actually a more than reasonable stack hey but when's the last time you final tabled something roddy come on like uh, 2009 I, I, I or something <laughs> right, i final tabled the tiny tuna actually i, I final tabled an uh omar holic tournament this week like the 315 but it was only 84 entries but i ran like god man like omar is so okay. fun right because if you go on these streaks it's just like you hit everything and you see potential in every hand and it just keeps on coming but yeah Ooh, then i took eight nice. places at the final table i ran kings okay and places. So what do you do i Nana? mean what do you it's, do? it's not the same it's it's omaha right like running kings and days in omaha is not the same um but know, if I you know. yeah it's all good but it's sebastian just bumped up four deuce offsuit against Chris Rudolph. Uh, That's pretty cool to see. Um, A6. I would just ship it in, man. Uh, mm -hmm. But it is a lot of big ones. But uh, it's we've seen players ship this in for sure. Yep. I, I like, I like it because every blind counts. And now Gravy Boat is like, hmm, 
he's King Jack Evergood here, and he's like, there is a chance, but it's just too much. You don't want to be calling, like, what is it? Uh, 20, 24 big one? Yeah. Yeah. That's just a bit too much with King Jack, right? Especially, yeah, it's like, oh, how far ahead are you? Because you got to think about this. When you have King Jack, you beat King Tens, right? Uh, Queen Jacks. But the thing is, for 25 big blinds, your opponent in the small blind probably isn't shoving that many big blinds with those hands. So now it starts to look like ace X's and like pocket pairs, and it's obviously not uh, good for you. Now so even the rebuy guy is yeah. starting to shove. I mean, I like it as well. <laughs> the Queen Nine suited from the small blind, but we're about to enter level 37 if this continues for three more minutes, Nanoko. Are you ready for the 500,000 1 million blinds? Because they're coming. <laughs> I would love to see that. I'm not sure what the biggest blind we've seen at uh, our final table is yet, but uh, a little bit curious now. Maybe but is thinking about it, but he would have been wrong. Makes another correct fault. This is just becoming a shoving festival. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, Riba guy is the only one with queens. He's like, all right, ship it. Come on, gravy boat. Everybody's doing it. You can do it. No, he makes the call. <laughs> yeah, no action coming. It's be... no. Try to entice him, but that's not going to happen. I always like it when you have like a monster hand on the big blind. And then you see people folding. And you're like, come on, all in. Like I'm sitting there. I'm like, go, oh, ship it, mate. I'm weak. I'm weak. You know, I'm weak. And there's like snap call with queens races. It's the best feeling of online poker. Uh-oh. That's a move by Chris Rudolph. Jeez. I like it. These guys actually taking the pre-flop a little bit more, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great, but it's like, so if everybody's all inning, uh, do I all in with pocket fives? <laughs> now, I, I kind of miss Elkie now because it's kind of like yeah. everyone's been shoving. We were getting more post-flop and craziness right now. It's like, okay. They're like, okay, now that Elkie's gone, let's go back to our pre-flop game. But no, I, I, it was more fun when Elkie was here. You know, now it's just kind of been a little bit slow. But like, fast pre-flop, but not like uh, some cool bluffs or anything. Well, I think there's a chance that Sebastian will tag along here. And if he tags along, then I won't mind it if Gravy Boat throws in the extra chip. Obviously, 7-3 is pretty ugly, but it is suited, Nananoko. And just one big blind to be playing for like six, seven big blinds. <laughs> I feel like you may as well at that point. Unless he's Sebastian, Sebastian three about, bets. Yeah, it looks like he wants to put in a big three bet. I, he knows he's been calm and it should get it done. Uh, it's a very cool move. Reba guy will get out of the way. I like 8-5 suited. Do you know why, Nanonoko? Um, no. This why, is a why very is stupid that? reason. Embrace yourself, okay? Because I'm born on the 8th of May, so I believe that 8-5 suited is my lucky hand, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, is it the year you are born? But I don't think you were, because that's the year I was born. And I don't think we're the same age. So, But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, knew, I felt like it was something like that, though. I was, I was on to it. <laughs> Never thought about it, but maybe I should start falling in love with 8-7 uh, as well. We actually have a little bit of post flop play. Ace-5 offsuit against the A-6 offsuit. Do you believe we're going to chop this one up, or do you think someone's going to take it away? I think we're... Yeah, chop it up. I mean, once we got to the turn, like... It doesn't make sense for anyone to bet, even on this river card. It just makes sense that the ace high is good to, to check it down, and that's our that's our most exciting post spot in the last five <laughs> minutes or so. <laughs> yep. Lines will go up in eight hands again. Gravy Boat is probably going to be the one making a move here. Might go for like the tiny race and then hoping that Chris Rudolph shoves, but yep. I don't think Chris Rudolph is going to do that. So I like the setup there by Gravy Boat, but it didn't work out. And then give, just give everyone some garbage again. I feel like now we're just waiting for the cooler. It's like, all right, who's going to get the jacks into queens or the ace king <laughs> into the ace queen, right? Like, it feels like it's just a... Uh, a ticking clock at this point. If Sebastian shoves, do you believe that Gravy Boat calls? I mean, it's no, a lot of big blinds. It's too, too weak for this many big blinds. Um, I don't know if Sebastian's going to shove, but I definitely wouldn't be calling base five. Uh, yeah, just Sebastian way too weak. Sebastian has been shoving a lot, though. Ace five? Uh, now nah, he's thinking about reshoving, though. That's the thing. See, you don't want to call it off, but you might want to reshove oh. it. There we go. Now that, see, I like that play. Um, I know it sounds a little funny, uh, but 
you know, when you're calling off, that means you're forced to see it all in. But when you're yeah. shoving yourself, you know, you got the fold equity and, um, and that's what you want. You want to win chips without uh, having to see a flop turn a river. Mm -hmm. That makes perfect sense. And I love the play by Gravy Boat. I wouldn't mind it if he uh, calls here 240k to play a 780k pot. I'd always go for it. Unfortunately, that is the wrong monotone board for Gravy Boat. Why couldn't those spades just be clubs? Well, it is four spades on the board. So if someone bets, they likely will win it. Um, so he still has a chance of winning this pot. Just depends if he wants to fire maybe a turn or river bet. It's so scary though, because you're always like, what if he's trapping me? You know, there's a chance that he's scared of the space like I am. But what if he actually just flopped it and he's waiting for the sucker to put in some chips? It's like, <laughs> I don't want to be that sucker, Nano. And he is going to be the one that fires first. And don't, nice, nice. I was like, how can... The thing is, Ace Jacks by like a little suspicion was like, how can I call with no pair? It's just a disaster. Well done. Gravy Boat chips up to 3.4 million. These last 30 minutes have been very kind to him. I mean, you kind of set up Gravy Boat to do well in this tournament. You're like, I, I kind of hope he does well. After Ever since he kept making those folds with the kings, the queens, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, actually, did, he lost. He folded three times, right? The like, kings once and two queens twice. And he folded correctly every single time. Absolutely. No. Really impressive play. The fact that he's still alive is a minor miracle, if you ask me. And that's why I was hoping for a bit of run good for him. I'm a bit sad that he doubled up through Elki because I did enjoy the action a bit more with Elki at the table, but uh, beggars can be choosy, I guess. And it is what it is. <laughs> Let's see what happens over here as Sebastian does flop a gut shot. Reba guy flops bottom pair, but also have the ace of clubs as well. And the back door is Nana Noko. Everybody loves those back doors. Um, Sebastian uh, obviously will continue. I guess the question is how. He's going to go for the check call. Your rebuy guy here, you're just thinking, please hit me for a race. Uh, it looks like Sebastian thinking about maybe leading the turn card, and I think it's a reasonable hit card to lead on because uh, the 8 improves him pretty well. 8, 9, queen, 10, 10, 7. That's just a lot of hands that would improve him. So I actually I like the lead. It's not a standard play, uh, but given Sebastian does have a little bit of more mixed up plays, uh, I think it's a good, good spot for him to do it. And, yeah. Yeah, Sebastian's nice. been playing very well, I think, over the last 40 minutes. Yeah, no, I really like, uh, and I like the people with the different lines too. Um, and I think that makes it harder for his opponents to read him post flop. And I think right now that's that's the edge you want. And you got two X chip lead almost. And I think you can put some pressure on, take some tricky lines, and just really continue to chip up as because the it does seem like these guys are kind of waiting each other out a bit, but trying to hang in there as well. Uh, in those situations, you can kind of raise a little bit more and, and take some pots. Sebastian setting up the trap here, flops top two pair, and he's gonna check it to Gravy Boat. Gravy Boat is like, what if I just put in a couple chips? You know, one big blind. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness, Sebastian makes a full house. He's definitely checking this one. After checking the flop, he's gonna be checking this turn. And he's like, all right, Gravy Boat, this is your moment. Take it away from me. I'm like, no, Gravy Boat, don't fall for the trap. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Don't huh? do it. He, he's thinking to bet one more time to try to get king high and ace highs to fold. Obviously not going to work. Uh, Sebastian trying to play a little bit of Hollywood. Probably go for the check yeah. call. Don't really see why you would raise. Um, unless you're getting just a little bit greedy. But uh, I would like to see a call. And oh no, he, that, is, gravy that bolt. is the worst card. That is the one card oh. that Gravy Bolt... <laughs> he thought he wanted to see it, but he really didn't want to see it. Well, Nananoko, I'm going to pull a full Nananoko, but that is it. Gravy Boat is eliminated <laughs> from the tournament. I know he's still sitting at 2.8 million chips, but he ain't folding this. He's going to bet big. Sebastian's going to come over the top. What a horrible river card for Gravy Boat. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> exactly. Full Nananoko did this. You're right. Big bet. All incoming. Wow. Sebastian's got to be thinking... How did I get so much value with my hand? <laughs> wow, he's just feeling so good. Um, Gravy Boat can't fold this hand either. It just can't. Because the truth no. is, Sebastian, say he's got Ace Jack, King Jack, probably going to make the same play and bye bye. He's going to snap just, just think, this one. He can't make, 
he can't keep folding. Because the thing is, this hand actually is really good compared to the kings and queens and queens, right? Yeah. And he's out. Yeah, he's out. This one was inevitable. That is an absolutely brutal, horrible, nightmare river card for Gravy Belt. He will be eliminated in fourth place. Walks away with $150,000. And we are down to three. Sebastian is now the overwhelming chip leader with 9.6 million chips. Oh man, that's so sad, right? When you're like, you're kind of bluffing on the, <laughs> on the flop, and you're like, ah, and then you bluff on the turn, and you're like, whoa, oh my goodness, I got there, I'm so lucky, and little did you know, you just you're so yourself. unlucky. You're just so yeah, yeah. I'm so lucky, but I'm so unlucky <laughs> when it shows down. Yeah, wow. Horrible. What a monster pot for Sebastian, though. He has really now taken control of this final table. Obviously, he has way more chips combined, uh, or way more chips than Reba Guy and Chris Rudolph combined. But we have seen these chip leaders fall, even when we're down to three, right? We've had a couple of very dominant chip leaders at some of these final tables. So it ain't over till it's over. But <laughs> I think that, uh, oh my goodness, he's running. He's running hard right now, Nano. I don't think he's going to get much out of this hand, but. It's got to feel good to be Sebastian at this point. Uh, but he's he's tricky, right? He goes for some tricky checks. So maybe his opponent hits some random two pairs or something on, uh, along the turns and rivers. Um, I think at this point he should be betting, though. You don't want to let those straight draws get a free card. Uh, but yeah, he's running hot. And Sebastian, uh, wow, he's just all of a sudden a huge chip leader. And I don't think, I don't feel like he's been playing too crazy. He has been choosing some nice spots to kind of pick up some pots here and there and uh, nice traps and nice uh, bluffs here and there, but uh, nothing too crazy, but he's just crushing this final table right now. Huge chip lead. Um, he came into this final table in fifth with 33 big blinds to let you know. And Gravy Boat came in in second, 55 big blinds, he's gone. But uh, Chris Rudolph came in in fourth, 46 big blinds and Rebuy Guy in third. So it's actually the... Third, fourth, and fifth place guys still in the tournament right now. This is really funny as we uh, see pocket sixes go all in. It was an A6 and a random six there in the big blind. I had a dream about this last night. Now that I see this end, I dreamed about this scenario that I was playing live poker. As A10 is going to go all in, I don't think, no, rebuy guy can call. Even though he would flop a set and he would win. Yes, you're you're going to flop a set, rebuy yeah. guy. <laughs> if you've been watching the stream, you make oh the my call. God, he's you flop the set. Flop that set. Flop that set. Flop it. He's going to flop towards. Flop. Oh, well, the, uh, the force is still good. Oh, oh, no, he needs to set right now. Rebuy guy with the pocket force. He's like, I've been watching that stream. That is not a four. <laughs> we cursed him so hard. We oh. cursed him so hard. He's just like, they always make a set. I'm going to show him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun. I feel bad right now. You know, it <laughs> happened twice that I say pocket fours always make a set, and I flopped quads. Like, there was there's one guy. Oh, this is a big pot. Wow. That's, a, that's a big shove. That's a very big shove. Yeah. I get Chris Rudolph is basically saying, okay, I know Rebag guy's got 10 big blinds. So I don't want to accidentally get it all in. Let me just shove it in. Um, mm -hmm. Different style than some of the other guys would do it. Yeah. Well, yeah. all of a Quad sudden, the, the, the once upon a time chip leader is now the short stack. But yeah, my, uh, my dream was that I was playing live poker and that I had Jack 10 or I had pocket 10s or something and I flopped a set. But then three other guys had a 10 as well. I was like, this is not possible. There are five tens in this deck. Like, that's literally what I dreamed about last night. Oh, cool story, bro. Stuff. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I was like, it's going to be hard for him to flop a six unless my dream becomes a reality. And there are five sixes in this board. Sebastian is going to ship these sixes. And he's going to take this one down. And that was a uh, adventurous call by the rebuy guy, right? Like, he memes the side. That pocket fours always flop a set. That was a pretty you, big call to make. You, you, we can't put the memes aside, but no, uh, yeah, that, that's a big call. But I think rebag out. I mean, yeah, I think it's a big call because uh, I think Chris Rudolph also plays bigger pocket pairs like that, five, six, mm -hmm. six seven, eight. Uh, so sometimes you just feel it, but you know what? Just because you feel it doesn't mean you're gonna win the hand. Nope. So all of a sudden, now, once upon a time, Chip Leader is now the short stack. He's got uh, well, 12 big blinds to play with. This should be an all-in, right? King-9 suited if you're the shortest stack, down to three. And he does. Still potential with the blinds this big. If you get one double up or you steal the blinds twice. I mean, I think he will defend okay. this. If Sebastian shoves, awesome. I think... Yeah, yeah call. that's a call. Diamond Zora 3 is what Reba guy needs to see here to keep his tournament's hopes and dreams alive. Could chop it up. That's good. Seven. 
Seven? Nine? Oh yeah, no, it's already over. Oh, We're gonna chop it. it up anyway. Yeah. Saved. Oh. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Ooh. Maybe this one. I think this one call off the king queen in my opinion. I think it's yeah. I think I'm calling off king queen here. Twelve bigs. Thirteen. Not loving it, but not hating it. Well, round two fight. Reba guy versus uh, Sebastian needs a king or a queen. Oh. There is the king on the turn. That means Sebastian needs to see one of the last three aces. That could be an ace. Oh, oh my god. My ace. god you of course sick. it's an ace. Why give him the king if you're going to do the dirty to him like that on the river card? Well, that is going to be it for Reba Guy as he is eliminated in third place. Walks away with $193,000. And this means that we are heads up right now in Nanonoko for our 21st final table of the High Roller Super Millions. Sebastian has a 3 to 1, 3 and a half to 1 ship lead. But well, things can go fast at these final tables. Yeah, that's just. I think we reached this final table uh, heads up pretty quickly today, didn't we? Like, it's, yeah, very quick. Seems pretty quick. Usually, we hit two breaks before we even hit uh, heads up. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's all right. That's all right. But uh, yeah, Sebastian, big big chip lead, playing really good. Chris Rudolph, I think he's been playing pretty good too. Um, just somehow, it's wow. Okay, it's two x over pot now. It's just think. Only one guy left. Let me just blast off some chips right now. And um, Chris Rudolph uh, somehow is in the heads up. I don't really see see him get too involved in. Like, he's been getting in there, but like nothing too crazy. But the thing is, I guess he only has four million chips, so uh, it makes sense. He, the other guy just busted out everyone else. Yeah, uh, I think Reba guy is gonna regret that call with the force. I mean, I would have liked to see him shove with force, but calling with force is. Yeah, I mean, he was flipping, so he wasn't totally wrong. But you know that, best case scenario, you're, you're flipping, right? Your opponent's not going to shift 20 bigs with pocket threes there. That'd be... A, a, I mean, maybe it's possible, done. but there's more yeah, hands but, that that you yeah. lose to than you beat. That's like one out of 25 times that you actually have an overfair with your force. Like, it's very, very rare. So I think he's going to regret that one a bit. But other than that, obviously, he played a solid final table. I gotta say, it is very surprising that we are left with Sebastian and Chris. It just kind of feel like that happened out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it is a bit of nowhere, but you know, it's poker. Anyone can take it down. And these guys, you know, they've been playing solid. Nothing, uh, you know, they've been making their plays when they should be. And I, I don't think, no reason they shouldn't be here at the end. It's just as we're just here so quickly, I guess, is the best way to say. Mm -hmm. Queen five continuation bet. Chris Rudolph, two pairs. Uh, he's hoping Sebastian just blasts off right now. Let's see if Sebastian does. There are a lot of chips in the middle. So obviously Sebastian would like to try to take them down. And he knows he's probably going to have to bet for it. As Queen High is rarely good here. Oh, that's a big bet as well. And that is music to the ears of Chris Rudolph. He's like, yes, Sebastian. <laughs> I think it's Chris Rudolph. Well, he went for the check raise all in. And he's just... He tried to make his hand look like a draw. Get looked up by an ace. And the ace probably would look him up. But... uh. Obviously, he didn't know his opponent was that weak. Two fives and ace ten could be some action. Yep, this could be big. I won't be surprised if Sebastian just gets it all in here. I mean, it's massive, but heads up. They're playing like people. Yeah, they're playing for a lot of chips right now. Hmm. I do think the ace ten does want to come in for a three bet, and I do think the fives should four bet jam if Sebastian three bets here. Uh, I I would like to see Rod. Yeah, I like the jam, and I think the ace ten. Might just lay it down? I don't know. It's it's a lot of big blinds, isn't it? Yeah, it is a ridiculous amount of big blinds. But Sebastian also knows there's a very good chance that he's at least flipping here. Mm. You're rarely going to be ahead, right? Like, your opponent's not doing this with ace-9 or ace-8, but... He's definitely he did doing put in a million small. chips this time, though. So, like, it's a little bit different than two fours where, oh, you just had the big blind. In this one, you actually have yeah. a three-bet in there, huh? This is tough. It's 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 very tough actually, Ooh, and I don't mind a fold. But uh, man, it feels like if you fold that hand now, you wish you just called, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, do it again, Chris. Do it again. This time I'll call you. <laughs> Sebastian wakes up with the ace queen suited the following end. I bet a lot of people that participated in our weekly Twitter contest that predicted ace ten offsuit were like, go get it in, call, because I think ace ten <laughs> is a very popular prediction. 
Uh, Chris Rudolph actually outflops Sebastian here with the King 5 offset. Man, actually, Sebastian just loses some chips right now. Chris Rudolph goes for check raise. Hey, but you know what? If Sebastian didn't see bet that turn with the Queen 5, you know, bet again on a turn, his opponent wouldn't have that many chips. And then when he ships his two fives, Ace then probably calls it off. Could be very different. Just want to say that, point that out there. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a lot easier to call three and a half million than five and a half million. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> like, if you're wrong about 3.5 million, you're still in the lead. But if he was wrong about the 5.5 million, then all of a sudden he's the shortest deck by quite a bit. So. Wow. Nice <laughs> value from Chris Rudolph so far. Check raise that flop. Got to turn uh, bet in and... Now, all of a sudden, he's the chip leader in this heads-up match, and wow. I'll, Chris Rudolph's been playing good so far this heads-up match, in my opinion. Very, very good. I think Sebastian now is like, damn it, should have stalled with the ace stand, could have been over. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's going to be. Like, if Sebastian loses this tournament, that's what he's going to think about, because you always replay the hands that could have maybe swung it in your favor, especially in heads-up. Uh, yeah. But he's not out yet. And Sebastian, the Frenchman, born in France, Residing in Monte Carlo, well, at least Monaco, Monaco for sure. Not 100% sure it's Monte Carlo, but you know, hey, he should be doing all right. Sebastian is going to give this one up. Chris Rudolph, it would be a very quiet winner. He was just kind of sitting there on the left side of his table. He got involved in a couple of hands early on. Then he just kind of sat on the sidelines to let everybody knock each other out. And then he's like, yo, anybody want to give me some chips? And then he got some chips. When he got called off with, what was it? It was King Queen against Pocket Fours, right? What was it? No, Ace 10. Ace, Ace 10, 10 against Ace Pocket 10. Fours. Yeah. yeah. King Queen was the final hand of the rebuy guy, just to, to clarify. But yeah, that's the thing. Let's just say Chris Rudolph ships this tournament. You know, I, 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 I talk about all the hands that happen. I'm like, hmm, I don't have much to say today besides, <laughs> good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not there yet. Maybe we'll get some uh, epic hands in this heads up match between these two. Sebastian probably wondering, where did my 11 million chips go? <laughs> it's all right. Real quick. We've got two kings going up against each other. Neither player really flops anything, but the pawn is already pretty big. So I do feel like we're going to get some fireworks in this one. Man, if both players don't have anything, maybe they just check it down. It's a reasonable hand to check down. Oh, but the sick... Oh, actually, no straights out there, is there? <laughs> Not yet, no, no. Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we are indeed going to chop this one up. Because obviously the kickers don't come into play here. This could be a decent hand. King, queen offsuit against jack eight suited. I'm definitely not folding my jack eight suited in a heads up match. Neither is Sebastian. But once again, the flop is very underwhelming. And neither player really connects. I mean, Chris Rudolph is like, I've got the king of hearts. And well, that's a fun turn, Nana. No? Yeah, it's the top pair and then two over. Yeah, this is definitely an action turn card. Um, like this is the best in bet. Uh, don't want to let free hearts roll off. And 420? King Queen. Four, 420. 420. 520. 525. Yeah, that's good. I like it. Uh, yeah. I think uh, Sebastian still goes for value, though. It's It's don't really see him checking, although checking would be the optimal play against his opponent's hand. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still think he just bets like half pod and just try to get called by something. Or what would you get called by? A random five or something? Or Yeah, it's reasonable. We are playing heads up. It's a little bit different than like full ring where, you know, you don't put those hands into opponent's ranges. But uh, yeah, I don't think he played it bad by checking, um, but just expected. Well, that does mean that Sebastian takes back the chip lead and he wakes up with the pocket eight next hand. Chris Rudolph with the immediate call of ace deuce. Doesn't flop much, but it does pick up the wheel draw. So a five would be one hand of a turn card. <laughs> well, Nananoko, every now and then I do have superpowers. There is the five, and Sebastian may be a little worried about your opponent having a king. He's probably not expecting his opponent to have a straight. <laughs> Um, but the two eights often is good in this spot, so don't fault him for betting again. 
Ace Deuce, you happy to see the straight? Uh, do you raise? Do you call? You can see it both ways, and he goes for a check raise. Protect your hand. There's a lot of bad turn uh, river cards, right? Like another club, of course. Uh, a deuce would be bad. A six, a yeah. seven. So I don't fault him for raising. And I think Sebastian is gonna let this one go. I think it's really hard to continue with your raise here. Oh, well, he, he calls. All right. So all of a sudden, this pot became very big. 4.4 million in the middle. Chris Rudolph with the check. Maybe he's a bit worried about the flush. Sebastian is going to check it back. Chris Rudolph is going to realize that his straight is good. Maybe worried about a six as well, right? Yeah, of course. Like I said, that's one of the bad cards he was worried about. And it's, he probably didn't expect his opponent to call another bet with just a naked king on that board texture. And it probably shouldn't. So it seems fine to me. It's fun how uh, the chip lead has been swinging back and forth. <laughs> Started off with Sebastian, then it was Chris, then it was Sebastian again, now it's Chris again. I, I personally like the way Chris is playing the heads up right now a little bit more than uh, Sebastian, but you know, Sebastian is trying to like, I feel like he's forcing some action a little bit too much in some spots, so it's actually causing him to bleed a little bit. Chris is going to bet his open and it's straight draw on the turn. Sebastian Ooh. is going to get out of the way. And this means that, oh, we're so close. Chris almost for the first time tonight over 10 million chips. Two reasonable hands here for a heads up match. A6 should definitely be raising, or at least calling, but he raised this right here. And Chris will immediately call with the Queen 9. I like how quick Chris is playing this heads up match. Well, look at the time bank. It's nine minutes left and two minutes left for Sebastian. Uh, here's the bet. I like to see Chris Rudolph come along here with the Queen 9 of clubs. Yeah, you just got Queen high, but you got a decent amount of back doors. He does fold, but. Uh, mm. I, I probably would have, well, you know, it just depends. But uh, I, I, I personally would have over. I think if he has one over card, he calls there. If that king is 100%. a check, I think he calls. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, but that's all right. Action flop. <laughs> Sebastian makes a gut shot and middle pair. And Chris Rudolph flops the open ended straight draw. It's a big bet, but uh, Queen Nine going shouldn't be going anywhere. I'm feeling this hand. I think Chris this is, is going to bet again. Yeah, I think Chris is going to bet. I don't think anybody predicted 10 wow. 5 offsuit to be the winning hand today. So this is where the Twitter <laughs> contest participants are like, no, <laughs> no seven or queen. Imagine a queen on the river. Yeah, that'd um, be nasty. It's a 1.5x overpot. It's, it's a big overbet. Um, it's a tough spot for queen nine. Especially if you haven't seen too many overbets from Chris Rudolph so far throughout this whole final table. You don't know what to make of it. If he makes a correct call, nice. Wow, if Sebastian can get an, a, just a check through on the river, he's back. But, man, Chris Rudolph, this is a good card to continue firing if you're bluffing. Yeah. I think Chris is going to go for it, man. 4.2 million in the middle. These guys don't give up in a heads-up match. High rollers, super millions. I think he's like, you know what? You're probably calling me with some weak nine, some weak eight, or maybe you had a pair and a draw as well. Mm -hmm. If I fully send it on this river, it's so difficult for Sebastian to call. Exactly. You're exactly oh. right. Wow. This is the hand defining of this heads up match, no matter what. Because Sebastian calls, obviously, it's great. If he folds, it's also it would have been the call to just take down this tournament. Man, oh, that ace of diamonds is so bad. Because, yeah, what a know, six spot. The f people are going to overbet the turn with flush draws, and they're going to get obviously go for value when they get there. He beats 10 X's. He beats two clubs. Probably would play this way. I don't know. It's just, just all around a bad spot. Sebastian, unlikely to have the ace. Something to think about because, you know, given the preflop action, he can't have ace jack with a re-raise. can't have two eights and two nines and two jacks. Like... Sebastian hand actually looks pretty weak in general. So he's thinking about it. And he's thinking, my hand looks weak. Maybe I can make a call when I think about it. But it's it's all around a tough spot. It is a disgusting spot. Because I think it's one of these moments where Sebastian's like, I think I'm good. But do I really want to call off my tournament live and the chance of taking down $321,000? If you guys are new to the High Roller Super Millions, there's no deal making at these final tables. So they really are playing for almost, uh, well, $70,000, $80,000 difference. 
What a big moment for Sebastian. Keep an eye on the time clock, guys. He only has 40 seconds left, and then I think he has five more additional seconds. But that's it. He's really thinking about it. Oh, oh he makes the my call. God. What a call. Amazing. What a call by Sebastian. That's beautiful. Oh, that is, my goodness. That is a hell of a call. Wow. That is amazing. And he's a commanding chip lead. Chris Rudolph went for that bluff. Man, that's really nice. That is sick. Incredibly well done. And that means that we are going to head into our second break of the night. As you guys can see, we're obviously heads up. Sebastian versus Chris. The action will continue in like less than four minutes because the breaks are a lot shorter these days. Uh, I actually kind of like it because some of these breaks in some of the tournaments when the final hand before the hour and certain tournaments was long. I was like, man, it's a seven minute break. Like, that's too long when I'm playing poker. So I'm going to take a quick moment for myself. Nana will take a quick break as well. And after that, we will be, being, we will be back to bring you guys the conclusion of the 21st edition of the High Roller Super Millions. Will it be Sebastian or will Chris will make an epic comeback after his bluff just filled? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Alrighty guys, I'm back. In 45 seconds, we will continue with uh, what will most likely be the conclusion of this heads up match. Unless it somehow lasts an hour, but I've got a hard time believing that. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying the show. I'd like to let all of you guys know that every Saturday we do the Beat the Pros event. Or as Nananoko calls it, the Beat the Idiots event. Nananoko could be, could be onto something because I'm part of it. And a lot of my Starker friends are playing in it as well. 
But it's a really fun community tournament. It keeps getting bigger each and every single week. It's a $210 bounty event that starts 7 p.m. Uh, Central European Summertime. So 1 p.m. for the East Coast, 11 a.m. for the West Coast. And uh, I hope to see some of you guys there. If you knock any influencer, streamer, or pro out, you'll get an entry into a 5K free roll. And it's just a really fun event. And on top of that, of course, every Saturday, a lot of the GG poker streamers are doing something together. The GG squad. You guys can take a look at some of the streams of Jay Nenders or Easter Dems or Kevin Martin, who's been joining in the fun as well. I uh, truly recommend some of you guys checking out those streams. They're a lot of fun. And a lot of those guys do giveaways as well. And I know a lot of you guys love giveaways, tournament tickets, etc., etc. you name it. It all happens on Saturday. Yep, and also they got the Battle of the Malta. Is that what's happening right now or soon? That is that is correct. Yeah, that already kicked off a couple of days ago. We had the opening event, the King's Landing. Played in that as well. Uh, I lasted like seven seven hands or something. My Ace King got beat by King Three Offsuit. It happens. <laughs> you know, two pair was a bit invisible, but uh, yeah, a lot of crazy events happening each and every single day. There's a leaderboard as well for the Battle of Malta series, just like we had for the Bounty Hunter series. So check those out as well. Some really cool events. A lot of bounty events. I feel that everybody loves bounty events. I haven't really met anybody that's like, no, I don't like bounties. Bounty events are just fun, man. Yeah, of course. It's always nice to like get some money back and stuff like that. But uh, uh, we'll be switching back to the heads up soon. But like, man, that last, this got really exciting all of a sudden, right? Like, like, like a, it's yeah, after LK went down, it was a little bit calm. And all of a sudden, like, it's been a bit crazy. And that last call down with the Queen Nine of Sebastian was amazing. Like, because heads up hasn't been like two out of line, but just Chris Rudolph one time makes that big sick over bet on the turn. And then he goes for it when the flush got there. It was Jack Nine Eight X Ace. And then, wow, that call down with Queen Nine was heroic, but definitely amazing. If our production is listening, we are not witnessing the action yet. Would be awesome if we could switch over to the table because I know the breaks are short and I have the feeling that the cards are already in the air and it would be very <laughs> sad if we missed the final hand. I did have a little message of uh, Elki. Elki's like, damn it, man, that Ace King fold was so brutal. He's like, at least it was a good fold. He wrote me 20 minutes later because I guess he watched the stream. It's like, yeah, that was a good fold. But... Oh, well, he said right. it's okay to be fifth. He's like, I was running really hard for a split second. Like, Obviously, it was running hard. Dude, don't remember the King Jack versus the two Kings, Elki. But uh, nah, it's always good. Man, he, he outperformed his last performance. And remember, Elki, he had he played this time a tournament nine times, two final tables out of four caches. Obviously, winning in the tournaments, uh, it's a fine result. Just gotta keep trying. Some of these guys, uh, they keep coming back, bullets after bullets after bullets. You know. I'm starting to get a little bit nervous that we don't see the table yet. Don't worry, we, 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 we'll be back to the table soon, guys. I know okay. <laughs> Twitch chat's thinking, man, these two commentators, what are they talking about? What's going on? But uh, don't worry, we, we're working on it. We'll be back real soon. Be back real soon, don't worry. Um, yeah, fours always well, make a set. <laughs> <laughs> All right, apparently we are facing a minor technical difficulty. We'll let you guys know as soon as it's resolved. Obviously, we can't do anything other than hope that it gets resolved as quickly as possible. It's been a very fun final table. I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, the player that has really made a very good impression on me, Nano, is Gravy Boat. I truly enjoy the way that Gravy Boat has played tonight. Um, that's just memorable to me, you know? Like, we often see like, players play their hands well, but for him to be put to the test three times with such monster hands in very gnarly positions and be correct three times, folding kings and then queens twice, uh, that's something that I will remember for a long time. And I'll be like, well, I hope to see more of him in the future because I really think he did play some very solid poker. I like how you 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 remember the Fallen, right? Like it's uh, it's Hunger Games, you know? We already shot his uh, little cannon up in the air. He's gone. We don't really remember Gravy Bow and Elky no more. It's all about <laughs> Sebastian Grex right now. Like he's been, look, he's been uh, pretty impressive. Uh, he's he plays, he takes some spots a little bit differently, but man, this guy goes up his reads, right? Like that call down so far of the Queen Nine obviously was the most amazing, but even some other plays have been, uh, you know, he goes up his reads. And it works. Like the Jack Six was a big hand against your guy Gravy Boat, that who's no longer here. Uh, but you know, he he didn't wow. get greedy. 
he didn't get greedy where he he just check call, check call, check call. Where some guys they might want to put a little raise in there, try to get. And that's the thing. If he had raised at some point or bet sooner, uh, the, he wouldn't have won that big pot, right? Say he bets the flop. Some people do two pair. Flop. Probably get called, but on a turn to three, four is definitely not calling you again. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be back in in a couple minutes. It seems like so. Don't go anywhere, guys. Um, we'll be back soon. Yeah, but uh, we're still here. We still got me and Roddy. Exactly. It should take two to three minutes, and then we will be able to watch. Uh... Like I said, what will most likely be the conclusion of this heads up match. Even though right now it looks really good for Sebastian, we've seen these ship leads flip over and over again. I mean, if they get it all in pre flop right now and Chris Rudolph doubles up once, then we're dead even, right? Like you take away 3.6 million chips of Sebastian, you add them on top of Rudolph's stack, and it's a super even match. So even though I right mean, now. Yeah, it's possible, but come on. Like, Sebastian Hero calls a Queen Nine. Just. There's no chance Chris Rudolph comes back now. He's been demoralized, right? Because Chris Rudolph's like, I've been crushing his heads up. And then when you get called down like that, you might as well just concede. Maybe try to, uh, I don't know. It's, it's over, right? Like, it's Sebastian is obviously crushing so hard now. <laughs> you can't recover. But the break is what he needs, right? Well, I, I feel like that also takes you a couple minutes to... Uh, you're just steaming. You're beating yourself up. You're like, I want to win a hand now. I don't know how it is for you. But like poker can be very brutal, but then the moment I win a stack, you know, whether it's a cash game or I get one double up in a tournament and I pick somebody's off bounty, it's like, well, I just got seven beats in a row, but I feel pretty good right now. It's all about getting back <laughs> in the winning column, you know, just getting one W on the board. And I think if Chris Rudolph just picks up one decent size spot, then it's still anybody's game. Of course, yeah. You know, that's the thing. Remember how we're talking about, man, is Chris Rudolph going to ship this tournament? I'm like, what am I going to say if he does ship this tournament? Because like, he's just been grinding cruising he actually been involved in a decent amount of spots but nothing too crazy uh that's all right though you know you look you tell me you come to the final table i'm guaranteed top two i don't care how, how the cards roll off you give me guaranteed second i'll take it well chris rudolph has been very successful on gg poker in the past he's got 3.7 million dollars in winnings on the platform which i think is more than anybody else on this final table well, it's tied with lena actually uh, Nicholas Ostad also 3.7 million. Sebastian, on the other hand, only had 293k <laughs> before he coming into this final table, so he hasn't beat that yet. But if Sebastian takes this tournament and he wins more tonight than he has won in his entire life over a GG, that's always a great feeling when you double those winnings in a single tournament. Yeah, I mean, we've had guys, uh, like what's that? that Mr. Gamble was that? Mr. He didn't Gamble, have much. Win he didn't have much winnings, and, and then he went back to back final tables. He got a second and then a first, right? But before yeah. that, he had like twenty k in earnings or something no, silly. I was thinking about that last night, and I actually had one of my uh, Starker friends that normally just watches my Starker streams. But he's like, uh, he's been really enjoying the high roller super millions, and now he's like hitting me up. He's like, I've been playing more tournaments, man. He's like, I'm gonna try to go full Mr. Gamble, and it's like now everybody <laughs> believes that they can run those 20k winnings up to half a million in a week. But I think that's the beautiful thing of poker. It's just no matter how bad or how rough it's been going for a while, like one week, everything can just be different. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, it looks like uh, we're trying to figure things out, so just bear with us for one second. Uh, we'll clarify with you guys shortly, um, because obviously they we've still been playing some poker as this extended break happened, um, but our production is getting back to us uh, very soon. Well, it seems like we have a rather unfortunate update from the production, and it seems that there was a bug where they couldn't actually record the final hand so there was no way to show you guys the conclusion of this heads up match we truly apologize for that and that's obviously very sad for us as well because we would have liked to see how this tournament unfolded but we do have the final result for you guys and that is that sebastian did manage to close this one out so he will walk away with three hundred and twenty one thousand dollars and apparently chris rudolph is the runner-up for tonight as he walks away with two hundred and forty nine thousand dollars but i would like to see and i'm going to try my best for you guys so nana you can take this from here uh, let's see if we can figure out the winning hand because i think a lot of people that watch the stream are very involved in this so i'm gonna try to figure look, that one out I, look i'm gonna tell you what happened all right sebastian hero called with queen nine and you know what happened chris rudolph just left and the thing is if your opponent just leaves he gets blinded out and, and sebastian just won the tournament he just blinded out his opponent right because chris rudolph 
was like, how did you call with Queen 9 on Jack 9, 8, X, Ace in the flush game there? It was just like, he broke his computer. He's going to have to buy a new computer with his 249000 but he could not continue the tournament. He was just like, I'm done. This guy owned me so hard. Just give it to Sebastian. So congratulations to Sebastian who ships the tournament after that Queen 9. Because think about it. We went straight to a break right after, and Chris Rudolph was so mad. He broke so many computers, so many different mices, so many keyboards. He just didn't have a chance. He didn't, it's yeah. just, he's, he's out. So you know what? That's okay. But you know what? It was a good final table. I liked mm -hmm. it. Elki uh, obviously was, a, I think it was a bit of a highlight for me, actually. Absolutely. The final table, right? But, and the funny thing with the Elki, Elki was, um, he ran, his chips, obviously got it in so crazy and get in bad and got there, right? But it's just... When he had the chips, he just dusted them off so quickly. It was it was kind of funny. Well, obviously, I feel bad for Elki in that sense, but it was a bit memey. Yeah, it went. Elki was a bit quiet because he was obviously trying to ladder. We had a couple of very short stacks. I mean, Nicholas Estad, the fact that he even came in seventh when it felt that he was the one who was supposed to finish ninth uh, was pretty impressive. But in the moment that Nicholas Estad busted, Elki got that big double up through Elio Fox. What was the hand where Elki doubled again? It was A7 against Queens, right? He got an all-in pre-flop, yep. A7 suited against Queens. Uh, Elki gets the big double, Elio was running super cold, and then all of a sudden Elki was the chip leader, but you know, it didn't last very long. Ah, yeah. That 9 on the river, Nano, in, that nine, in Elki's hand against the rebuy guy, where it was the open-ender against the pair of... Mm. Was it yeah, the board eights? was a 8... 8669. Eight, six. Yeah. And obviously Riba guy had a pair and then river two pair while Elki river top pair while he was chasing his open and a straight ball. I think if that river is a different card, like I'm not saying that Elki needs to spike his uh, straight, but if it's a random card, Elki doesn't lose that many chips in that hand, right? And it could have been very different. Possibly, but well, you know, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell as well. But there were other hands besides that hand that cost Elki a little bit of chips here and there. Um, well, but I've got like a fun update. Got... Yeah, yeah, I've got a fun okay, update. Let me do it, Nano. Enjoy. Let me do it. <laughs> do you do it. You do it. I'm looking. I'm excited. All right. So I know a lot of you guys are very involved in the Twitter giveaway contest we run every single week. All you guys have to do is predict the winning hand of the tournament, and then you can win $600. Nano Noko, if you go back in time two hours ago, what did I predict that was going to be the winning hand tonight? You said... What, what did you say? I said pocket queens. Elki shipping it all you with did. pocket queens. Oh, you did. You did. Yeah. And that is indeed what happened. Uh, the winning suits are the queen of spades and the queen of diamonds. So Sebastian managed to take this tournament down with the queen of spades, queen of diamonds. That is the winning hand for this week's Twitter giveaway contest. We've got action as well for the last hand. And it seemed like it was just a pre-flop all in. Pocket trees against pocket queens. And even though it was a pretty scary board, five six five five deuce the queens obviously did hold in the end no straights there and that's it no no that's going to do it pocket queens queen of spades queen of diamonds yeah uh i mean pretty standard hand of course uh but uh it was, it's someone out there must have picked pocket queens the question is did they get the suits correct i don't know right? spades diamond I, I, like, do you have a default two suits you would go for, like, if it wasn't suited? Mm. Like, I didn't predict the suits. I just said pocket queens is the winning hand. I didn't do the suits. But I think if I would have predicted the suits, I feel like you always put the queen of hearts in there. Because for some reason, I, I don't know. I feel like it has to be the queen of hearts. I probably would have gone queen of spades, queen of hearts. I think yeah, that is the I was most say, obvious. Yeah. Most people always add, include at least the spade. I don't know, it's just a default thing to do, right? And then the heart is the most second most popular uh, a suit, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, that's going to do it to, uh, for us tonight. Congrats again to Sebastian. Any other final hand that you want to go over? I mean, the Jack-6 hand was brutal, man. I feel Gravy Boat, Gravy Boat deserves another final table appearance because that five on the river, no man deserves that, Nano. Why do you always think... He's already fallen. He's gone. It's all about yeah. our, chip, our winner, Sebastian. But no, no. I, hey, I'm happy to do this final table. We, what made it special was Elki making it to our final table, like we said. Obviously, congratulations to Sebastian. And Chris Rudolph played great, even though he probably broke so many computers. But he got second place, and that's that's great. Uh, but no, I'm giving him smack. But he, they all... Look, in the Super Millions, we get very talented players reaching the final table. Some guys a little bit of a wild card, but no wild cards here today, in my opinion. 
Um, but obviously very fun, very different final tables, like you always say. Uh, but you know, we have multiple, we have, we're going to get this, a new two time champion coming soon. I'm just wondering when, right? Probably within the next five shows, you imagine. And it's probably going to be Mr. Gamble. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me as always. I want to give a final apology to everybody watching the stream. Truly really sorry that we couldn't show you guys the final hands, but yeah, it is an online show and every now and then technical difficulties do happen. I hope one day, Nanonoko, that you and I can do this live from a studio where we won't have any issues. Wouldn't that be fun? The offline edition of the High Roller Super Millions, maybe in King's Casino in the Czech Republic, who knows? Sounds good, man. I always love doing commentary. We'll see you next week. <laughs> All right, looking forward to it. And that's going to do it. I hope to see some of you guys on Saturday in the Beat the Pros event. And other than that, like Nano mentioned as well, make sure to check out the Malta series that are currently going on. Crazy amount of tournaments all day, every day. Lots of bounty events, smaller buy-ins, but obviously lots of big buy-in events as well. And that's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully see you guys again next week. Goodbye.